What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Black Sheep Perspective. Uh, today, I got a great guest that I happened to first meet for the first time. I love when I meet my guests for the first time. I love when it's random, and it's funny because you got random on your Instagram. That's right. You as part of your nickname, middle and name. your middle name, middle name random. So I'm gonna say with, with her middle name, we got Jill Random Rudison. There you go. Where's Rudison from, by the way? Uh, it's Serbian Russian. It, Holy it shit. used to be like, you know, and then my great The right way to say it is yeah. like that? And then my great grandfather went Do you know through. how to say the real way? The real Absolutely right way? not. No. But my great grandfather went through Ellis Island and they like hacked it up and they were like, Rudison. Ellis Island. Hold on. It. When, did I, when did I hear about Ellis Island? Is that somewhere by New York when they were coming over this yeah, way? That's like oh, is the, that what it is? That Ellis Island is the, the central, like the centralized hub where all the immigrant, immigrants came through when they were immigrating to America. Holy shit. Wait a minute. Did you watch the movie Hitch? No. Oh my God, Jill, you have to. That's a fucking amazing movie. Dude, dude it's not some gay love movie. It's great. And it's funny as fuck. I know fun. it's supposed to be funny. I just haven't watched it yet. I'm going to force you to watch okay, it. You, you have to watch it and then text me. It's great. It's great. Anyhow, damn, now you're ruining it. But I think- Sorry. <laughs> And Will Smith tries to take uh, uh forgot her name um Eva Eva Longoria what? no the other wait is it Eva Longoria I don't know not Eva Longoria it's the other the one the other Eva yeah he tried to take her on a dope ass date and he went to Ellis Island that's why I remember because they have the books of all the people that came through there that's why it resonated and then ended up backfiring because when he showed her her great grandfather turned out the guy was a rapist and all kind of shit. I'm telling you, it's a funny ass movie. And the date goes sour. In yeah, three, yeah. It's, it, I think you'll relate to that movie because of the bad dates that we've all been on through our our age and our experiences. But anyhow, and welcome to the podcast. Thank you. We've been um vibing and trying to make this happen for quite some time right now. How long have we been talking on Instagram? Do you have any idea? Months. No, a, a little bit more than that. Okay, yeah, like yeah. A, a year, like maybe a year. a year and a half. We started talking more actively, probably like in the last four or five months, and then um, we talked about doing a podcast. But you're a busy bee. You're a real busy bee. Tell us about that busy bee stuff. I mean, I was asking you earlier. Of course, people know. Man, I love the tats. I, I haven't even asked you about all your tats, by the way, because we were talking too much off cam. I wanted to start the podcast. Um, but we were talking earlier about your your line of work. So that people understand just a little bit because, you know, you're a little bit of everywhere. What is exactly that you do again? I am a producer for live events, television, and concerts. So And and different people contract you so you might get pulled in any which direction. I'm a freelancer. I'm an independent freelancer, which basically means I will work for anybody that waves a decent-sized paycheck in front of me. Nice. And, there, and then... I know you said the title, but what's that mean? Almost like project managing or it, it varies? It varies it, it on the varies. duties? I mean, it depends on the project, but for the most part, I'm usually brought in on like the production management spectrum or I'm brought in as the line producer and I'm in charge of the budget and hiring and firing and, you know, managing the crew and the day-to-day -day activities and then being like the middle person in between like the production company or the network and the actual team on the ground. So and, and, and you said you've been in that industry since you were 18. Since I was 18, I started interning for MTV when I turned 18, and I liked it, and I just never went away. Nice, nice. And speaking of MTV, did you ever get uh, any kind of cool gigs back then? MTV was hot back in the days. Well, I mean, you know, MTV was the shit back in the day, and that was... You know, when I first... I, we didn't have cable growing up. I wasn't allowed to have cable, so I would have to watch cable... When I would go over to my friend's house. You know that statement just made people think, wait, the fuck? How old is she? Yeah, old. <laughs> <laughs> like a fine wine. Um, yeah, like, and I remember one of the first times I actually saw MTV was when I went to go visit my cousins. And it, I think it was like 19, oh God, like 1987 or 1988. And it was the first time I'd ever seen MTV. And they were playing um, young MCs bust a move and it was on smash or trash. And I just remember like it came on TV and I was just, wow, this is so cool. And then they would have like, you know, like their beach houses and things like that. And I just thought that was so cool. And then when I turned 18, I went to college and I got an internship with MTV on South beach when they used to have a studio. Right. I remember, the, I, yeah, I remember used to seeing it. Yes. Yes. Back yes. in the day when they had the studio on Lincoln road and I got an internship there and that was my first taste of production. And before I even finished my internship, I was already starting to do gigs for them. That's pretty dope. Did you get to meet some early celebrities back then before they blew up? Yeah. I mean, back in the day I was a PA back then I was a PA for MTV for almost like, eight, like forever, like eight years because people, either really liked me as a PA and didn't want to lose me as a PA. So they just would never move me up. Um, and I just, I was really, I was good at that position. I was a great PA. Um, 
and I I was very lucky. I got to work on a lot of shows. Like I went and I did Beach House um, in the Keys in 2000. I did Spring Break in Cancun. Oh, Um, You know, I did multiple shows where we traveled and like traveled across America by bus. um, So you're you're, you're experiencing experiencing some wild shit, like young alcohol, drugs, partying, sex, rock and roll type shit, right? I imagine. Well, when I did Beach House back in 2000, I used to be, I was working with the talent department and one of my duties very specifically back in that day was I had to always make sure we had grape and orange Pedialyte on hand for Carson Daly. Carson Daly, I haven't heard that name in a while. Good old Carson Daly. Hey, that man worked his way up. He did, and he he worked his ass off. He did, you know. But but he needed Pedialyte every day to like function because you know. Because he was partying. He was partying. Oh, okay. So he was recovering. That's why it wasn't just some weird like he wasn't being a diva. Like let's say J Lo. J Lo wants her little fucking bottled water or whatever. No, No, he was. He was recovering. We had another VJ that was a diva that yelled at me for a cold hamburger once. Who was that? Brian McFadden. And then later it was funny because we, stupid Facebook was like, kept suggesting him as a friend. And I was like, dude, no, I don't want to be friends with this guy. He's a dick. He yelled at me because his burger was cold once in like 2000. And then finally one day I I got a bug up my ass and I was like, you know what? I'm going to write this man an email. And I wrote him an email and I was just like, hey, you might not remember me. I was your PA (laughs) like in Key West in 2000. And you yelled at me once because your burger was cold and you made me cry, and I don't know if you remember that. How old were you when you said jerk. that? When I when I wrote him and yeah, told him, or yeah. when the incident happened? No, no, no. When you sent it, oh, it sounded like it was years later. Yeah, it was. It was probably <laughs> like I don't know. It was probably like ten years later, and I just had a bug in my ass one day, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna write this motherfucker and tell him what a jerk he was. And surprisingly, he wrote back, and he apologized profusely, and he was like, you know what? I was a real asshole. During those days, I was young. I was wow, but he a wrote lot. back. That's, he wrote that's back. commendable as fuck. Okay. And we're still we're still friends on Facebook. <laughs> that's pretty cool though, because some pretty people cool. might not care to you know acknowledge that. Well, what yeah. the fuck? It is what it is. I'm like an elephant. Like I'll forgive you, but I will sit back. You and won't like, forget. Hell no, I'm not gonna forget. It's that. funny. I was thinking as you were telling the story, I was thinking, man, what the fuck was that reference? It's like a meme on on social media where women would be the best referees or something like that they don't miss a fucking thing and they remember everything and it's the truth man you women will bring some shit up you know but we got a lot of battle of the sexes shit to talk oh, <laughs> that, yeah. that, that's for sure so you're doing this production stuff but i, I do know that you used to bodybuild mm-hmm. I was where, where, did, where, where did that happen did, did you balance both at the same time or were you kind of cutting away from one to chase the other and how did that happen what got you into bodybuilding we're talking about bodybuilding yeah like, not not like fitness no no, no you competing like, yeah I was, I, I was an IFBB pro for many years. Um, I competed. Well, it, let's go back to how it all started. Okay. I used to train at Porky's Gym in the hammocks, right? Okay. And that was like, I love that gym. It was 24 hours. It was Porky's. It was great. It was no frills. Right. It was awesome. Epic place. Very known. Yeah. And um, one day I was there training and I was, I was working with a trainer named Maria Blondo and she runs the NPC Southern States bodybuilding show here. And she was like, you know what? You have a really good, like, you just have a really good natural frame for muscle and you carry it really well. You have a great X frame. I think you would do really well in bodybuilding. Have you ever considered it? And I was like, no, like, no, it's not really my thing. Um, and she was like, you know, I think you'd be really good. You should give it a shot. And I was like, no, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a bodybuilder. Like I'm not, it's not my deal. But you were fit at the time though. You yeah. Know. I, was, I, I was, no matter what, I've always gone to the gym okay. every single day, or, you know, at least like I've, I've just always have to, I have, I'm like Matthew McConaughey. I have to break a sweat once a day okay. or else my day is like not complete. And I feel much better once I have. So I've always gone to the gym and, um, she was like, oh, whatever. I see how it is. I think you're scared. I was like. I'm not scared. She bust that reverse of course psychology. She, yeah, one hundred percent. She's like, that. whatever, you're scared. And then it's okay. And I was like, I'm not scared. She's like, then fine, I I dare you. And I was like, Ugh. and she's like, I double dog dare you. And I'm like, oh, she threw down a double dog. It's back good. then double dog dare was a big that deal. Was it. That was it. She <laughs> threw was down a, a double deal. dog. I had to take it. Like there was no going back now. So she double dog dared me and I took her up on it. And like fourteen weeks later, I was on stage at a bodybuilding show and I and I I, pl- I didn't win. I mean, I placed pretty well. It was my first show. I think I placed like seven or eight. And like you, were, you were what age at this time? I was 26 when I did my first show, which I mean, just by the sheer numbers and looking at the bodybuilder competitors that come in today, obviously the younger you are. Of course. So that you would be called a late entry? Or, yeah. Or? I'd be, you know, at this point I'm like over the hill, you know, for that stuff. But I, I started at 28 and when I was done, I was like, you know what? I kind of like that. Like that was kind of fun. I, I did pretty good. 
I, I'm really impressed at how my body changed so dramatically. Like what would happen if I just kept going? And then I just kept going. And then uh, a few years later in 2005, I moved to California and I was doing production. I was, you know, at that time I was, I was still doing production, but I was doing like amateur, like, like local and regional shows on the mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. Um, and I knew I wanted to move to California and do production. And then secretly in the back of my head, I had this like weird little desire to have this like bodybuilding life. And if I was going to move to Los Angeles and do this production thing, well, then maybe I could segue with it and also have this like secret little bodybuilding life and like go train at Gold's Gym and right. like, get the best of both worlds. And so I went out there and that's what I started doing. And I started training at Gold's and I fell into the right group of people. Um, in regards of like training and things like that. And people who really stoked the coals for me to want to compete out there. And before I knew it, I was like, at that point, then I had to make a decision. Do you want to bodybuild or do you want to stay with production? production right. Because I can't really train if I'm working, you know, 15 hours a day, five, six days a week. Like, And, and you it, pro is pro. I, I've known a few girls who have become pros that doesn't pay the bills yet. Oh no. But, did you do well enough where it was helping you pay the bills and you didn't have to do the production? No, huh? No. It's a tough living. Negative. Uh, I mean. Unless you're in the top five tier, right? Or something like that. Where all even, the sponsors. But and even if you're in the top five tier, I mean, the problem is now, and I haven't really looked at the demographics or asked too many people, you know, currently like, hey, like, where do you, like, where do you land in terms of making money off like sponsors or, prom you know, like whatever. But the simple fact that so many people now are, are just so gung-ho to like associate themselves with a brand or promote a brand or like whore themselves out or hawk themselves out for a brand it then takes away from the people who, who, should, who should get paid for it correct so it's like it's like ambassadors everybody's an ambassador exactly no one's so, really getting so paid. who's really getting paid right you know and like i mean and also when i was competing i mean like social media marketing and all that stuff was like just starting like social media kind of didn't even exist i remember I mean, it, it existed, but only in terms of like MySpace. Like, well, first it was Friendster, right? And then it was MySpace. And then it was Facebook. And then you had Instagram. So, but like, like Instagram didn't even exist when I started bodybuilding. Right. Like if you wanted to see who was hot or who was coming up, like you had to wait by the mailbox for the magazine to land or right. go to go to Barnes and Nobles and get a copy of Muscle Mag or something. So it, it was just very different back then and the opportunities I feel like also because it was a smaller niche of people that were doing it. Whereas like when I was doing it, bodybuilding was weird. It was super weird. And now everyone's like, I'm a fitness model. It's like, right, right. okay, cool. So everybody is a bodybuilder. Now it's the cool thing to do. Awesome. But, but back then it just, it, it was a very niche thing and it was very hard to make a buck. The only ones that were really making lots of money were the men. Um, just a quick comparison and i haven't again i haven't checked the figures recently probably just because i don't care as much about it as i used to but back in the day mr olympia the old prize money when i was still competing for mr olympia i think now it's like three hundred and seventy-five thousand, maybe more mm -hmm. but when i was competing mr olympia top tier prize was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for wh whichever male would be crowned mr olympia right ms olympia top tier prize seventy five hundred dollars Wow, now you you know you just got women flared up right now because these feminists are listening. They're going, oh, it hasn't changed much. <laughs> I mean, I mean, so you were, but you were part of an era that I'm actually uh, well aware of because I didn't. We were talking earlier. I didn't tell you I, I got locked up when I was young and I did some time in prison. And one of my favorite magazines was Flex. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just fucking read it back and forth. And matter of fact, I learned a lot more on the personal training tip from Flex and bodybuilding magazines than I did from the actual course in yeah. regards to uh, certification courses you were part of i know obviously the ronnie coleman era but i don't think ronnie coleman won just yet when you started or did he no ronnie had already won when i started because he went seven straight or six straight one off and then another one something yeah. like that um, like i came in like during like the jay cutler era right when jay like cutler when was jay next Cut up. when jay cutler was reigning supreme that's kind of okay when I started. okay and he came after ronnie well he competed well, against ronnie, ronnie yeah, but then it was he ronnie, took it. and then it was jay and then it was phil Right, Phil Heath. So when I came at like the years that I was competing, it was like it was like Jay Cutler, and then Jay Cutler passed the crown on to Phil, and like so those were like mm. the years I was involved. It was like two thousand, was it? God, I, I competed two thousand five until two thousand fifteen. So ten ten years. I did a solid ten years. How was your transformation process in regards to like? I'm imagining you were already fit. 
You said you were, you know, going to the gym and whatnot. But obviously bodybuilding is a whole nother level. You know, one of the biggest uh, things that goes out there is you can't make it in the pros unless you're doing steroids. 100% true. 100% true. <laughs> but how did you get past that hump? When, when did it hit you like, damn, like I like how I look and I like a little bit of muscles, but you're asking me to inject something. You're asking me to get into the next level. Did you just, did it hit you fast? Like, well, fuck it. If I'm this far and if I really want to make it, it is what it is. I just have to because there's no way I can get to that level. Or did you have a hard time doing it? Because I've known girls who they're like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do it natural. I'm like, oh, well, you're not going to get far. Right. Period. You're not, you're not going to get far. That's just it. Well, I think also like when, I mean, I also was a total product of my, my, my environment in the sense that I was training at Gold's Gym Venice, right? And when I, when I was competing, I was training with, the first trainer I worked with was a woman named Joanne Lee. And she was a British bodybuilding champ. Beautiful, beautiful woman. When And I wanted to train with her because when I saw her across the gym, I was like, I want to train with her because I want to look like that. Okay. Like, I loved her look and whatever she had done with herself from being this, like, humongous jacked woman to, like, now, like, as she got older, she was just very feminine but right. still very fit. And right. I was just like, that's, you're embodying everything I want to be, so let's talk. And I trained with her for a while, and then... I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to train with Chris Cormier and then also with Charles Glass. I remember Chris Cormier. He was on the uh, Ronnie. He was on Ronnie Coleman's um, documentary. Yeah, they interviewed him, yeah. and I was like, "Damn, look at Chris. He doesn't look the same." Chris is rad, man. Chris is rad. Yeah. He's he's he's. I love Chris because he reminded me. He reminds me a lot of myself, and we see a lot of like we're both Leos. I just really like by the way happy happy belated birthday thank you very much we're, we're both leos we're both very similar and he was always the one of the most gifted physiques i've ever seen on the planet i mean that man's x frame is like off the charts He's he, just, he was always like top three top four he just he kept always missing was. it right yeah. yeah but it but it was also you know some people blame it on the fact that he was a party boy Okay. Back in the days, like literally he'd go do the New York pro and the night before the New York pro, he'd, he'd drop a pill and go to limelight and dance all night because he's like, dude, I was doing cardio. Like I, 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 I was, was going to say, water, hey, he's sweating it. Fuck it. You know, cutting and, weight. And he'd be like, I would, you know, I'd leave the club at like five, six in the morning. I'd go back to the hotel. I would take a shower and then like get ready for the show and go. And I'd be like, you know, all shredded because I'd been dancing all night. Like, you know, but he was, he was a badass. I mean, the fact that he could, the fact that he was able to do both and have fun and still go and do the shows. It's awesome. Does he have a bug in his ass about never quite crossing over the yeah. threshold where he wanted to be? One hundred percent. You know, I don't know. Has he? Has he openly talked to you about having regrets? I mean, everybody has their regrets. Looking yeah. back, you know, like if I would have trained, if I would have trained a little harder, if yeah. I would have done a little more cardio, if I would have eaten a little cleaner, you know, what could have happened? Right. So, I mean, I have my own regrets. I was, I was a good bodybuilder, but I was never a great bodybuilder. I. You know, food would call me in the middle of the night and like, you know, I thought if like, you know, nobody's looking, it didn't count. <laughs> that philosophy obviously doesn't work when you're bodybuilding. How long was this uh, career called it, you know, that until you finally decided, all right, I'm not going to compete anymore? Um, you know, I, I turned pro in 2012. I competed as an amateur from 2005 until 2012. I turned pro at, um... Jeez, I don't even remember the show I turned pro at. How sad is that? I just forgot. Anyhow, I turned pro. Because your birthday just passed. I turned pro. Yeah, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Selective memory. Um, I turned pro in 2012. And then I competed as a pro for three more years. And during that time, they actually nicknamed me like the roadie of bodybuilding. Because I was literally just going from show, show to show to show and living out of hotels <laughs> and training in little crappy hotel gyms and like just there was like a couple months where like I just I literally was like on tour where I just I did one show a week and I just went from city to city and it was tough it was yeah it was it was really tough and I just you know I mean that took a lot out of me obviously the financials of competing and training right. and paying for your suit and your tan and your stupid costume jewelry and your posing music and your flights and you're this and you're that it just gets really expensive and there was never any big paycheck at, at the end of the road for it or like i was never getting big sponsor bucks like i mean i had a couple uh supplement sponsorships with people but it was like it was so paltry what they were sending me they'd be like oh we're gonna send you 150 dollars worth of product a month i was like well thanks for like the two free tubs of protein right like, right that really helps 
By any um, chance, were you ever a, a fan of WWF, WWE now? Yeah. So I don't know if you if you watched Joe Rogan. Mm -hmm. He just had Hulk Hogan on. And um, man, I you know I've, I've I've known a lot. I used to be a big fan. Used to well, a while ago. I don't I don't know how grown men are still such big fans. But yeah. Um, I think it's funny. It's awesome. Uh, to each their own. I never heard some of the story. I never heard none of the fucking stories. Yo, Hogan is spilling beans on so much. And it sounds very similar to the struggle that you're talking about. And I was just like, wait, what? Hulk Hogan went through that? I mean, the grind that they had to go to and how, how go through and how many pennies they got paid and traveling, how many times he got fired and this. People don't know that. They just see Hulk Hogan. Right. You know, the the the, the star, Hulkamania. They don't realize, you know, just how much of a grind it is. Well, bodybuilding is rough, too, because it's not like any other sport. It's a completely subjective sport. There are no actual right. rules. Yeah. You can be like, oh, can we refer to the rule book and see here? No. Like, the guy next to you, he might not like blondes. The guy to the right of you might prefer blondes. So they're going to have very differing opinions on who the number one stunner is on that lineup. And would you say, because I know I used to tell the homegirls this about five, six, seven years ago, the few that I knew that went pro or they were about to go pro. I was like, hey, from my understanding, that shit's mad corrupt until you get up there and you're going to get tried with the whole, you know, sexist stuff and guys being guys and, you know, people sleeping around with people. Did you see that? Did you feel like, you know, that was like it'll sway judges? I mean, there were always rumors, you know, about certain judges. Mm -hmm. There was rumors. And, you know, I mean, I personally, I, I can't say with, you know, with authority that like I ever saw or heard anything myself or with my own two eyes, I heard what I heard, but you know, I, I'm a believer of where there's smoke, there's probably, you know, where there's smoke, fire. there's fire. Right. So, right. you know, and there's always three sides to every story. Yours, theirs and what really happened. So, right. you know, I mean with anything, you know, with anything, there was different elements to it. Like there, you know, there would be accusations sometimes of like, you know, because now they have these teams. And also when I first started, like we didn't really have like, competing teams and then i think like the second or third year i was kind of in it it became more of a prevalent thing so you'd have a competing team right that you know came you know, you know charlie's angels or whatever okay um and charlie's angels would come out and compete and they'd all have their little matching jackets and they had their coach that would like you know he was like you know their coach their nutritionist like this you know whatever like they're all encompassing person that would bring them to these shows and some organized shows yeah. yeah well also, if the, you know, if Charlie's Angels is also part sponsor to that same bodybuilding show, and uh, Charlie's Angels has brought right. 37 contestants who have all paid $150 to play on that stage, I would think Charlie's Angels might get a little special treatment. Of That's course. just me. Of course. You know, right. so, I mean, there was rumors about that. And, you know, of course, you know, there's always pay to play and, like, weird, with anything, there's, like, weird stuff going were, on. Were you before you got into the bodybuilding. Were you attracted to that type of physique? Not yourself in a, in a woman, but like your man. Did that type of physique, uh, a Chris Cormier, or Phil Heath or whatever, you know, just bodybuilding on the next level, did that attract you beforehand? And if it didn't, did you eventually get attracted to that because that's what you lived, that's what you were surrounded by and you found, you know, certain uh, levels of attraction in it? Uh -huh. Not really, honestly. Because most me, of the times that's what happens. To me, you know? yeah, but for me, I mean, I can appreciate, okay, I can appreciate anybody that's athletic and their physique because okay. you work for it. So that's that off the bat is admirable, right? And if it's aesthetic and it's pleasing to look at, hey, better, better for everybody. Right. But as far as like a bodybuilder physique, I'm not, I mean, personally, I'm not really... Like, I'm not really into a bodybuilder physique. Number one, they gas out real fast. Okay? Like, <laughs> the more muscle, the more yeah, oxygen. You, yeah. They gas out real fast. They're, like, big. They're kind of slow. They huff and puff when they move. God forbid your shoelace unties. Like, you know, it's... That's awkward. I never thought about it, it in those awkward. details. Why? It's hard to tie the shoe because they can't fucking bend over? Well, a lot, of those, a lot of those guys, I mean, at least... And a lot of my friends that I was just around at Gold's Gym that were competing, I mean, those guys are larger than life. Right. right. And a lot of those guys don't walk around at that weight normally. You know, like they're, they're, they're coming in much heavier than they normally would. So then you have all this extra weight on your body. And, you know, like these guys, you know, I, I can remember walking to the gym with friends and they were so damn big that they would like, 
They wouldn't even walk. They would like side shuffle and then they'd like uh, huff and puff all the way to the gym. You know, it's just, it, I don't know, like like male bodybuilders, like that, that, that physique for me, like was never really my thing. Like I, I mean, I, I personally work out and go to the gym just because I've, I've always just been in love with the look of a muscular woman. Like, I don't know. That's just like, that's what I want to emulate. So, you know, I'm, I'm in there more so for me, not, not to look at the big old lungs walking around, not even able to breathe. But you would, you can imagine that a man who, and I know they're out there the yeah. same way a short guy will fucking date a, a, a big, a big girl, a taller girl and uh, skinny will go with fat and all that. It's a, it's a, I think it's a little bit more difficult to, to have a man who's not as muscular as you or at least matching you to. Am I really that what? big? First of all, I did not say that now. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just, talking I'm about just, back then. No, no, no. I'm just asking in general now. Like, okay, like current day Jill. No, like, no. I'm, I, I'm not that big. At all. I think uh, the only thing that I think with somebody would say is bigger on you than normal would be your arms, your biceps. Yeah. That's it. The, to me, the rest of you, maybe your shoulder. No, not your shoulders. You might have a little bit of trap there. I can't see it because your your yeah. hair. But that'd be the most. No, I don't think you look that big. Okay. But again, but I'm thinking how you might have looked back then. Yeah, I was, I was big. There were some. There were some pictures I'd go back and look yeah, at. Like, it, I think it would take a <laughs> damn, old girl looks swole. It'd take a muscular ass dude to drop his nuts and want to, you know, holler at you because, like, you know, you got guys who can't date a woman who's taller than them because it fucks with their their ego, it fucks with their manhood, they, the way it looks, and so on and so forth. Like, I've seen there. I've seen a guy squat with his girlfriend. There's a there's a couple right now at the gym that I go to. Um, my friend Kenny, one one of my fighters, he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> I can't say names. His girl out squats the shit out of him. The man, the girl out squats the shit out of the man. So he'll do workouts with her, but when she's on leg day, he won't work out with her. And I notice it not because I'm staring, but because you know you see everybody who's at the gym, and I'm sure it's because he knows he's gonna look. He's gonna get out squatted. That's it. Mission PT Rehab and Recovery is your one stop shop for all physical therapy and wellness needs. Our licensed physical therapists provide customized hands on treatments. For all sports injuries, accidents, workers' comp, and more. No doctor prescriptions required for the first 30 days. Mission PT has one-on-one -on -one personal training for sports-specific needs, as well as general weight loss and strengthening. We are conveniently located steps from Dayland Mall. Call today for your free 30-minute consult, 786-409-5589. That's 786-409-5589. Mission PT, perform at your best. So is it safe to say that you your dating game wasn't too strong at that point because of everything we just said or during during the bodybuilding yeah. stuff actually when i was bodybuilding my dating game was strong as fuck really yeah dude <laughs> i was busy i was busy girl I, you know like well it was also are, are bodybuilding women more horny when they're bodybuilding because of certain drugs or I shit think so Is, yeah. yeah yeah i mean you know, I definitely, I definitely did my share of stuff when I was, when I hit pro level and I had, to, you know, I had a choice. It was like, if you want to, if you want to compete at this level, this is what you're going to need to do to compete on this playing field because everybody on this stage alongside of you is doing it. Right. So it was like keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah. Um, but I definitely feel like when I was take when I was taking Anavar, oof, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wrap these legs around your ass if you don't know what the fuck you're doing. No, yeah, these legs were neck snappers, man. It was bad. Oh, oh well. I mean, you know, and I've I mean, heard it was fun. Don't get me wrong, but I've yeah, heard, I've, 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 um, I've heard a lot of great things of Anavar in regards to the effects that it can have on a woman if you do it right. And you know, you, I mean, it depends on what your goals are, obviously. Yeah. And and I know that everybody has different um after uh, after effects. When I'm, what's the after effects yeah it's like yeah uh, what's the what's the, uh, the 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 term i'm looking for i don't know i forgot it it's not after effects that's like oh. some movie side editing effects. Shit. side effects there you oh, go. teamwork there you go okay. you're right after effects is an editing <laughs> yeah exactly 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 um but yeah but i've definitely you know I've, again the homegirls that i told you about that i listen i, I do anavar and this and i was like well fuck you know you can't tell tell but i, I know that women to get to that next level not the uh, bigger level definitely right. anavar becomes uh right. something that gets put into the mix i mean there were girls doing way more stuff than i oh, was right, i was right. i was pretty I, I was pretty conservative compared to other girls although there was there was a point and the point that i decided i think i had had my fill with bodybuilding was i woke up one morning and i had to whatever i had to take my pills and it was like you know every morning i had this like ginormous pill case like an 80 year old woman would have like filled to the brim with different pills and i woke up and i'm opening my pill case and i'm dumping my pills out in my hand and i had all my pills in my hand and at one point i looked down i had 27 pills in my hand 
And then I looked in the refrigerator Jeez. and I had three pins laid out that I had to stick myself with. Oh my and I was goodness. just like, Rudison, what the fuck are you doing? And I was just like, you know what? I don't, I don't think I want to do this anymore. Like this is, this has actually come to a point where I, I think I've reached, I, I think I've reached my fill. Cause if this is what I have to do, I just, I'm not interested in doing right, it anymore. Right. And then I, I, I did, I did my last show I had done was the Ferrigno and I did that not taking, I hadn't, I didn't take anything for that show. And I think I placed like, I don't think plays like 12th or something. It was definitely like second or third call out for that one. But, but I was happy that I did the show having not taken anything. And I just, you know, that was my natural look for that show. I, I know this is not comparable to that, obviously, but um, I was watching this, this, uh, what, I don't know, it's a video on YouTube. And it was basically, it was, it was a, excuse me, it was a compilation of three, three people, three experts. Um, Andrew Huberman, um, Jordan Peterson, and I forgot the last guy. And basically all they were doing was talking about how bad alcohol is for you. And again, we all know it, right, to an extent. But but it has been, it had been a long while since I heard the details. The, I mean, just the rigid details of how bad alcohol is for you and, and in which way and how it affects you. So here Huberman is doing one section, Peterson the other, another. And they broke down the effects it has to you if you work out. The effects it has for you sleep wise. The effects it has for you if if you do everything right. Still, what it does to your liver. What the liver has to do to this to that. Man, when I heard and got just, I just got backhand. I just felt like a scumbag looking at this. And and I'm a healthy fuck. And I you know I do a good fair share to keep myself pretty healthy. I eat right. I train my ass off. So on and so forth. I try to make good decisions. My kryptonite was having wine every night. But I'm talking about every night. And where somebody would say, oh, yeah, I have a cup every night. There's nothing wrong with that. Your cup is fucking peanuts to me. I can easily, easily smash a 750 milliliter bottle. That's the small one. Don't let me buy a big one because it's on sale. Because I will probably smash the whole thing if I don't have enough discipline, you know. And it's, and it's, I know how that sounds. And I know what a professional can say. Oh, you sound like a functioning alcoholic. Because here I am getting up at 5 a.m., 6 a.m. the next day and going about my day like, Nothing ever happened. Like nothing ever happened. Getting good sleep, good, good this, that, whatever. But when I saw all those details and I heard them on, I was just reminded of it. Again, I didn't open up a fridge to 27 pills and three syringes. But man, it fucked with me, Joe. It fucked with me. Something happened and I'm like, fuck's wrong with you, Wes? You're way stronger than this, dude. Do you really got to drink this wine? Like, I want to have an eight pack. I got the six. And if I flex hard enough, you'll see the, the little bottom ones. But why can't I reach it yet? Well, for one, I'm drinking loads of sugar at night because wine is full of it. Two, I, I of course I turn that buzz down before I knock out by eating my little snack. Now it's not a it's not a bad snack, but I am having a healthy size snack at 10:45, 11 at night before I go to sleep. Now my body has some, you know, so everything that follows suit. I'm not gonna hit the goals that I want by by having this continuously quote unquote bad habit. So. It was a weird like epiphany type moment and shit, man. And from one notch to the other, I just said, okay, if I'm going to drink, it's only the weekends. And, and again, I, I know how that sounds, but I'm just saying, if I'm going to drink, it's only the weekends. I'm no longer going to drink throughout the week. And then I switched it again. When I would go to the beach and hang out with my, my peoples and we'll do volleyball and all this, you know, beach activities. Um, I love being, I love being physical. I love competing, but I'm not overly competitive. I just don't want to put on a shit show. I don't want to be that guy who's like, damn, I don't want him on my team. You know, I never want to be that guy. I don't care what sport we're playing. So I'm, I'm getting more and more serious into volleyball, watching videos, practicing, practicing my athleticism, doing certain uh, movements so I can get better on the jump, on the this, on the reach, whatever. But I'm still drinking IPAs. And just two IPAs is stronger than a I, fucking full crown, a uh, full thing of whiskey. That's your problem. Yeah, I know. Why are you drinking IPAs? I love them. Really? Oh my God, I love oh. them. Love them. Yeah, just, they'll, they'll put hair on your I'm, chest. I'm not an IPA fan. That's I, I, why I'm like, skirt, that's your problem. Most son. people. Drinking IPA. I know most people are not, and I, I and, and I understand. So because I had the little whatever epiphany, I'm like, damn, can I tone down the IPAs too? Because I really need to find another option. Because I will run through six IPAs, which the average alcohol content is like 8.2, 8.7. And before you know it, even though I don't think it, I'm borderline drunk playing volleyball, and I'm not playing as good as I can. So it started fucking with me. So I started drinking these trulies and all these little bullshits <laughs> listen jill Great. i hate them no they're not good they're not good fuck that uh, i do not enjoy it 
But I had this talk with my friend. Shout out to one of my friends, uh, Peche. I'm talking to him on the beach. And he's like, what do you think about it, Wes? I'm like, tastes like shit. But it's cold and it's refreshing. And, it's and refreshing it, and it's better for you than a Red Bull. Is that? Oh, fuck yeah. I don't fuck with Red so Bulls. So there you go. And he, what's funny is he goes, listen, dude, I, I'm not trying to talk to you like I, I'm some specialist, but I think we just have the oral fixation of just always having to have something in our hand and, and drinking, especially when it's hot outside and this and that. I think you'll get over that hump real quick if you just stick to your guns. Just keep pumping the Trulies or the new trees, whatever they are. And that's what I've been doing now. So now I'm going to just lock it down on that on the weekends. No more of this week weekday drinking, especially the wine, as much as I love wine. And um, hey, I feel better already, little by little, that's for sure. You know what's funny? And you wanted, you said you wanted to talk about this, so I'm going to segue into this because Go right you talked ahead. about Heck it. Yeah. Somehow, some way, if you drink wine every day when you're in Europe, you're just fine. I know, you right? You can't wait. That's crazy. It's magical. A lot of slimmer people over there, right? Dude, every day, every day in Italy, I was there for like three weeks. Wine. It was wine o'clock all the time. And I was more shredded in Europe, <laughs> not working out, drinking like a fish, than I am like busting my ass in America. So since you segued us into that, let's talk about that. So you went on a Euro trip. Went on a Euro trip. We were supposed to do the podcast before your Euro trip. Yep. And um, you went on it, you came back. I said, you know what? Cool. Don't worry about it. I'd rather talk to you when you get back because I want to hear these stories. I want to hear, you know, what did you see? How was it? Tell me. Tell me how, how it went because it looked phenomenal. What, where where'd you jump from to jump from and what, what were the things that you noticed about these countries? All right. Let's start from the beginning. First and foremost, I would like to say, if any of you have not been to Europe and you've put it off your entire life or for years and years, like you should not have, like I have. Please run to your phone or computer and book yourself a trip to Europe. You need to go. It's important. Literally. Nice. Okay. Nice. That was not an advertisement for Europe. I <laughs> highly endorse it. Okay. So I, I cashed in some air miles I had. And I did this entire trip on a, like, on a budget. Like a lot of people were like, damn, like friends are at me. I'm like, damn, bitch, must be nice. Oh, right. It must be nice to like, you know, do all this stuff. I'm like, okay, first and foremost, a lot of times I was, I slept, I slept on ferries um i slept in like dinky rooms i had really nice rooms sometimes my first night in italy my best friend and i we slept on the floor of her apartment because her furniture hadn't come in like it was it was fun i did europe very much smartly and on a dime and like budget conscious so i cashed in some air miles i flew from miami to paris i met up with my girl oli who was doing a month in paris uh for holiday Met up with her. The first night I was there, we, you know, we just went out, whatever. The second night, um, a friend of ours, Jasenia, had flown in and she randomly flew on the plane next to Capone. Um, and he had told her that Wu he was going in for the Wu-Tang show. And I didn't even know Wu-Tang was playing. So the second night I was in Paris, we went and caught a Wu-Tang show. Wow. Which... Talk about a surprise. That was dope. That was dope. And I've seen Wu-Tang a bunch of times, but I've never seen Wu-Tang in a packed 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 huge stadium like there with nothing but french people going nuts like going ham to wu-tang it was awesome um <clears throat> so wu-tang right off the bat second day and then uh after i got out of france pretty quick because paris was cool but like it's true what they say like people are very rude right um that's what everybody has yeah, told me it smells like piss Oh, you I know? didn't know that. It's like okay. New York. It smells like piss, but like 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 worse. I don't know. It's very clean. They did clean it up a lot from what I've been told in comparison by friends. It, it's pretty darn clean, but it, it does stink like piss. Uh, there's graffiti on everything. It, it kind of just looks like a part of New York that's like really like like a prettier part of New York. Okay. And the subway at like four or five in the afternoon is like the hottest, smelliest place you could ever be on the face of the planet. I didn't even know Paris had subway. Oh, yeah. I should know that, but I didn't know. Yeah. Okay. Subway system. Wait, there was a Paris bombing not that long ago, wasn't there? In a subway? A train. That was a long time ago. It was. I it have, was. You're right, you're right, right. I don't know. They they have more stabbings and problems like that now, I think. Because they can't carry weapons over there. It's illegal as fuck, right? They don't have guns? In Europe? No. All of Europe? Yeah. Wow. Okay. They didn't know that neither. I knew it was somewhere. Yeah, there, we're those crazy Americans. We get guns, you know? No, we're not crazy. We're smart. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but like oh you know in comparison to them because you know they're not allowed to carry guns, guns right. so then from from so france from france I, I bounced out and i took a flight to athens 
I met up with my tattoo artist, this cat, John Doubleman, um, in Athens. And then he and I took a ferry from Athens to Santorini. And then we did, I cashed in, like, I had a bunch of hotels.com credits that I'd gotten from working over the years on shows and, like, booking rooms. And I was like, you know what? I have all these rooms that are going to expire. Like, I'm going to use it when I'm on vacation. Okay. And I cashed in a weekend at Nikki Beach um, in Santorini, which was really cool. What is Santorini? Uh, it's a Greek island. Okay. I, I thought I heard about it, but and okay. it's absolutely beautiful. Like, so I've heard nothing like, but the best things about Greece. I took myself to Santorini. Like, I took myself on a honeymoon, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and I invited my tattoo. My tattoo artist just happened to be in Athens, so I invited him along. So he was like my stand, he was my stand in, uh, like, I don't know, stand in partner. <laughs> the, the, the stand in, my goodness. <laughs> my stand in, stunt, stunt partner. Um, this was a total of what, 30 days or so? 30 days. And so then, so the second half was in Greece and, and the islands? Yeah, well, I did I did Santorini, which was beautiful. Amazing sunset. Those serene sunsets you see, like, on people, the white People different over there in regards to, like, the natives? Yeah. Locals, Greek, sorry. Greek people were great. I okay. love the Greek people. They're super sweet. Very nice. Everybody spoke English, which was cool. And was, what about the food? By the way, I, 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 I heard... I, I, I can't heard, speak any other language. How's the food? I mean, I know what Greek food is, food. but was it that it was, good over it there? It was delicious, and yeah. it was cheap. Greek, Greece was amazing. I love Greece. If I could like buy a house in Greece and just go, like I'm down. Sign me up. Is it expensive living? Um, not really. I mean, honestly, all of Europe, in comparison to what we pay in America for so many things, right? It's like I almost feel hoodwinked in the sense that like I, I had knowledge of this stuff, but okay. I had never really experienced it for myself, so it didn't really seep in, you know. Okay. But like when you go to Europe, you can fly like country to country for like $15. Wow. Okay. If you go to Ryanair, you can book a flight from like London to Greece to Italy for like 30 bucks. Like, like things like that or make no, you know, yeah, we, we can't even go, go to Orlando for more than 50. Or you go to a restaurant, right? You can have a delicious like three course dinner for multiple people with a bottle of wine easily under a hundred dollars. It's not, you know, and then you come back to America and you like, you know, you go to a restaurant and like Kendall, like for two people with a couple drinks and it's like $200 and you're yeah. like, are you kidding me? That's why I'm not going on dates anymore, but we're going to get to that. There you go. Yeah. Oh, and what would a typical, on a, on a good price uh, uh, season flight be to Europe? First of all, you can't go directly to Greece, right? That's, yeah, you can. Oh, you can? Sure. So what does what that run about? From the US to Greece? Yeah. I mean, probably like round trip. I don't know, like around a thousand bucks ish. Oh, I mean, I'm sure you can really. find it less. Okay. And I'm sure it's more at other times, but yeah. You know. Is the season the season summer like everybody else or no? Greece's season they told me was between from May to October. And then once you get to October it actually it gets cold there. Really? Yeah. Do they get snow? Do you know? I don't think they get snow, but it gets cold. Like the water there is already it's it's not you know, it's not tropical water. It's cold water. It's a black sand beach, which is like really weird. So, I mean, when you, when, even when you just go in the water, when I went in, I, sw I swam, but not much because it was too cold for me to get out. I did and a lot more sunning than swimming. Do you, do you feel like that's definitely something where you want to have your last years in? No, I mean, there's plenty of other nooks and crannies of this earth I haven't seen yet. So I got to see them first, you know? And did this, and did this I start I went to Ibiza though? at the end of the summer. That's how I ended the vacation. Oh yeah, and really? I, okay. I freaking loved Ibiza. Ibiza was great. It really was. It was like a hilly, it was like a hilly Miami. It was like a hilly South Beach. Be, if, if South Beach had a baby with Santa Monica, but had like a techno influence <laughs> and they and they were clean like that's EB's <laughs> great way of putting it, Jesus. I don't know. So that's a nice, nice way. But, but is it a party country? What Spain? No, Ibiza. Ibiza not a country. Well, the city. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I mean, it's definitely a party city. That's you know. That's is it all... comparable to Miami? But but for Spain. Well, it was an influence on Miami. Like when Miami Beach started becoming like you know like hot shit for all the clubs and like I don't know if you remember back in like the late nineties when they had like but we had a pacha here. There yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. And course. you know, and of course, we had amnesia here. Yeah, like, of obviously, course. like phone party. Yeah, those were all Ibiza influence. I had no that idea. was all Ibiza influence. Like, we didn't think that up. That came from over there. We stole that from them. Did you get your party on? I did. I did. I saw uh, the first night we went to amnesia, the real amnesia, which is 
very intense. It's an intense experience to just get in. It's like lines, like it's like I mean, you're just in lines. It's like Universal Studio ish. Like okay. it's just that was kind of weird. And then, uh, unfortunately for us, it was a very very German techno DJ that was playing that night, and it was just the music was just eh, 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 eh. it was horrible. <laughs> I did not enjoy it. But the second time I went out, uh, we went and saw Eric Prids, and it was the opening night of his residency tour for uh, Hollow, which is like, I don't know if you've seen pictures of it on the Instagram of like the astronaut like reaching out over oh, the yeah, audience yes, I have. and the guy yes. like opening yes, the yes. portal. Yeah, it was that show. It was dope. And what would that be you considered? Can, is that considered techno? That style of music? Yeah, I mean, it's electronica. There's so many categories to that type of music. Sometimes I don't know how to... I don't know. I say techno just because, like, whatever. I'm a 90s kid, so... Back then, it wasn't electronica. It was techno, so... I used to think that techno was something that I didn't like, that it was more of the tiki-tiki. It's all tiki-tiki. Yeah, well, I thought house was what I liked, but house with vocals in it, but that's now... That's like deep house. Yes, I do. I definitely like okay. deep house. Deep that's house for is sure. good shit. I even like some deep house when it has a little bit of dub mix in it, but I don't like straight dub. Dub is yeah. too hard. Dub is like, you know... I was like a breakbeat kid. Like, I always liked the breakbeat stuff. How's your dancing skills? It's pretty good for a gringo, man. Stop. I swear. Yeah? Yeah, dude. <laughs> did you ever, did you, come on, did you ever go to like the Edge or Fever? Or like, yes, of course, of right, course. Well, I don't remember Fever, but Edge, yeah. I mean, Edge was known for I would for battle the, uh, on the dance floor. The, well, in what shape or form? Like, like, yeah. like breakdancing? Not breakdancing. I wasn't doing like head spins or nothing, but like, you know. With the glow sticks? I, I didn't really swing the glow sticks around. I just did like the... Just the generic battles, you know, the jump in into the funny battles, the like, you know. Why? Why is it that you had to have your tattoo artist as the uh, the the shoe the the, the stunt double? Because there was nobody else I knew in Athens at the time. I'm saying, why? Why? Why are you single? Why? Why aren't I don't you? Know. What I is? Told what you, is I'm it overqualified. About? Overqualified. I'm yeah. telling you guys right now. I'm still in that. Instead of saying that I'm too picky, I am now going to say that I'm overqualified. I love that line. Elaborate on that. How do you feel about this dating game? You're, you're, you know, you might be saying your age. You know, I don't care. Okay, you're 45. Okay, yeah. you just turned 45. So, um, you're not a, you're not a newbie. You're not a rookie. You're not a little 20 year old. You've had your fair share of experiences. Few boyfriends, some serious, some whatever situationships. Where, where are you at now? And why, why is it that Jill, you're, you're a beautiful lady. You're successful. You got open time to travel. Maybe your job fucks you up. I don't know, but why, why, why is it that you're single? Cause I want to, I, I want younger women to hear this. I don't say girls. Cause you know, if you're in those twenties, uh, no disrespect. Y'all bitches figure it out. Don't worry. You'll, you'll get yeah. there. But thirties and on, they need to, they need to hear from more women, some type of advice or at least some real like, Hey, guess what? If you, if you get this far, this might happen. If you don't make a decision by this time, this might happen. What's going on with you and why? Uh, I'm, I'll put it this way. I'm, I'm okay being by myself. Okay. I'm, I'm good in my own company. Like, I enjoy my own company. I crack me up. I'm funny. I entertain <laughs> myself. Like, whatever. It's cool. Um, you know, I, I enjoy my solitude. I'm very much, mm, like, I, I, yep. I'm a loner. A rebel. No, I'm kidding. Um, so I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. I'm probably too comfortable, yeah, which is part of it. Also, problem, I'm yeah. I'm too comfortable being by myself. Where I'm just too comfortable with it, probably. And so I'm, and I'm also, I don't know. I'm probably not as intentional as I could be, or you know, should be. But I don't get out enough. I don't, that, make, that I don't either. I don't, I don't okay, go out. You know, I'm like that meme that's like, you know, sad never meets anybody, never leaves the house. Like, that's me too. You know, okay. I just, I don't, you know, or when I am out of the house, I'm, I'm working and I'm in work mode and I try not to shit where I eat. Like, that's always been, you know, I, I've always ab abided by that rule, which is probably also why I'm single too. Since, since I started following you, you have a lot of people who you interact with whenever you post um, or on your, you know, the things that you say. I'm assuming that at some point or in the past, you've had some friends who have tried to hook you up, put you down, something like that. And what was it that failed? Are these guys just not masked enough? Are they, uh, you know, are we in an era right now where men have changed to, to not to your liking? Or is it there's too much baggage just coming with the average man? I just think, I mean, with, I mean, here's a, it's a generic problem across both genders. We'll say this. 
people think they have a lot of options out there also, you know, in the sense that like back in the day, like, you know, moms and pops, whatever, we're going back. They didn't have a whole lot of options. Like if Sally Mae liked them at the dance and made a pass at them and like, it seemed like it was going to work. Then you just went after Sally Mae and that was it. That's right. So, and now with everything being so never ending of choices or options or possibilities, people tend to, I guess not even, people tend to not really even number one, try or get to know because they're just, you know, if it doesn't check everything, they're looking beyond to see what else is out there because there's endless options. So you never really. So are you going to say that a lot of it has to do because of uh, social media? I think that has a lot to do with it. And, you know, it, it it's distractive. It's, you know, uh, it's not great. <laughs> I mean, I'm guilty of using it, but like, it's it like is it is it good? No, not really. I just I just think there's a lot of options out there, and people just aren't either they're not emotionally available, which is another big thing. And I think sometimes maybe I'm not emotionally available to date, you know, like or like maybe it is me, like just because I'm comfortable being by myself, or maybe I'm not emotionally available like I think I am. Um, I have a lot of friends who bust my balls about this you know um pretty much same shoes you're in very very similar and you know you get annoyed by it and i don't know i can't speak for you i i told you off cam earlier i strongly feel that i will find a great woman at some point i don't know that it'll happen soon probably not but um i can't tell you exactly why i guess because of what you just said it won't happen soon i think i'll be more accessible in 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 six months to a year, year and a half, I think right now I'm I'm grinding a lot. I'm very comfortable with solitude. I love my space. What I what I and I know men say this a lot, and and, and I definitely I hope you know this, but for the, for the females out there listening or watching, men are really uptight about their peace. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sticking up for men and and all the you know the the knickknacks in between. But once a man hits a certain age. Everybody's age is different, but once a, hit, a man hits a certain age, the last thing you want to do is fuck with his peace. If if you got a guy, I'm not a gamer. I don't fuck with games. I, I back when I was younger, if you got a guy who's a gamer, he loves to game. I don't care if he's forty. If you think a man who's forty should not be gaming, you you should not be fucking even entertaining that man because that's his peace. That's when he disconnects from the world. He gets into this fantasy land, and that's when he enjoys whatever it is he's doing: Call of Duty, Madden, football, whatever it is. If a guy likes to go fishing and you're like, you know, you go fishing every Saturday, let that man have his peace. If that man can't get that out of him, he's going to bring it home. He's going to be frustrated. And I don't like people fucking with my peace. So the minute, I'm not asking for perfection. I know that, obviously. And I'm not trying to run at the at the, the drop of a dime of you say something that I don't like. No, that's some puss ass shit. I'm not that guy. But if, if you're showing the signs that, man... You're gonna fuck with my peace. If you're doing this now, if you're if you're upset because I didn't text you within the half hour or things or you know things of that nature, I think I think that along with social media and all that is causing a lot of men to not want to entertain things. Me myself, much like you, too complacent, don't step out enough. But if I was to be hard hard on myself, I'd say the minute I feel like you're gonna fuck my peace up and it's taking a long time to get here, I don't entertain it. I don't. Well, that, and once you've, I mean, you know, once you've had a couple of relationships, at least for the, like, you know, you learn something with each one. Right. And I just think that, you know, once you know that, once you know pain and you know what that feels like, you know, that's something you, you don't want to go back to. So if that means solitude, if that means being by yourself, you know, and just like chilling, that's a better place. Right. That's an excellent point. Mission PT Rehab and Recovery is your one-stop shop for all physical therapy and wellness needs. Our licensed physical therapists provide customized hands-on treatments for all sports injuries, accidents, workers' comp, and more. No doctor prescriptions required for the first 30 days. Mission PT has one-on-one personal training for sports-specific needs, as well as general weight loss and strengthening. We are conveniently located steps from Dayland Mall. Call today for your free 30-minute consult, 786-409-5589. That's 786-409-5589. Mission PT, perform at your best. So would you say because of that, 
you know, you got a bunch of podcasts, and uh, we talked about, um, fuck, what's it called again? Oh, Fresh and Fit. Fresh and Fit. I mean, shout out to them, you know, the, uh, much props to them. They're making buku money. They're, 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 they're doing great. But we, we spoke about it, and we said they're doing it off the backs of a bunch of dumbass young bitches who are on OnlyFans, and they're just they're allowing these guys to ridicule them, roast them, just to get their faces out there. So I, I, I'm not disregarding them, but for this example, yeah. yes, I am. But there are podcasts out there that talk about the, the dating game, and I've seen you know various where the, the, the ages vary. I don't care to entertain the young ones. I said it again. You, you twenty, you under thirty year olds, you fuckers are just sleeping around, being stupid. You think you know it all? You don't. You'll figure it out when you get older. But you think for the others, if you think it's fucked up now, and you being forty five and you being single, when when I think you should have a good catch, you know, on your arm, what are you gonna tell the thirty year olds? What, what would be something you suggest if you're gonna give them some advice? The thirty year olds, the thirty two and above, what would you tell them? Like you know, hey girl. Lock somebody down now before it's too late? Or, like, what would you tell them? Oh, man. I just feel like, don't do it. Don't do what I've done. <laughs> okay. But what part is that? Like, don't, uh, don't do which part? I don't know. I mean. <sighs> you, you make it seem like, like, like you're, well, th you're thinking well, back into some bad no, decision or something. Maybe. No, not really. I'm just, I feel like I'm too picky. And that's, that's I mean, that's my, my issue. But. And I mean, and it's fine to be picky. I mean, I think I'd rather be picky and be annoyed that my pickiness is maybe <laughs> taking as long as it is or whatever than necessarily, you know, waste my time. I don't know. Like, like I would say to, to, for girls or anybody I was giving advice to, maybe when you, when you decide if and when who you want to date, do it with intention, do it with purpose and don't waste your time on don't waste your time on people here here's the best advice i can give cuz this is a hard lesson i had to learn don't give your time to people with the like for people that you have a love or a hope for what they can become Ooh, okay. don't waste your time on that like do not waste your time with a false illusion of what a person can become or what they are capable of so base it upon what they're presenting at the time. Base it upon what they are presenting to you at that moment in time, all the way. Because through age, you realize that if you act a certain way in your mid or early 30s, there's a great percent chance that you're not going to change. I mean, there's, al there's always an opportunity for change. It just obviously Agreed. depends on the person and, and how much work they're actually willing to put, put into in. it right. to show and prove with their actions and words that they have made a definitive change. But I think everybody wants to see the best in people. You always want to see the best in people, right? And you could be, you know, like, let's just give a generic example. You could be dating somebody that isn't like, like the guy's kind of a bum, but he's a good guy. He's got a good heart. He means well, but he's lazy. He lacks ambition you know, he, he could do more, or provide more. That's a great or example. In, or embody or em, empower himself to do more in life. But he's not. And he chooses not to for no reason. No, no necessarily good reason because he's got all the ability in the world. I, in, I, in, in true, I, in true honesty to myself in honoring myself and, and you as my partner, if that's the case, cannot look at you for what you have the opportunity to be. I can only look at you for what you're giving me right now. And that's it. And I feel like at least a lot of people that I've dated, I've done that and I've given them, I, I've almost given them a pass or given them the grace of that when I really, I really shouldn't have. Because anybody, I mean, you could look at me and, and I have all the, I have all the opportunity or ability to, you know, I, I could be whatever, you know, like whatever I, I want to be, I could be these days. I could be a unicorn if I want to, but it doesn't mean that I'm that. So the same way I could, you know, look to somebody and hope that they would be a better or bigger person and they're not giving that to me. Don't waste I, your time. I, I forgot, um, I forgot who said it. I think it was in a movie, but I remember I took it to heart. I was like, damn, I like how you said that. And, and I, and I get it's more, it's more, I believe it more than not, but I understand there's a flip side to it. And the, the saying is, intentions mean shit. Right. 
Intentions mean shit. We all intend. Most of us, unless you're an evil motherfucker, we all intend something righteous, something positive, you know, some goodwill on the next person who we wish the best, whatever. But where is the action at? Where is the action at? So you can intend whatever it is you want. If, if the actions aren't backing it up, intentions mean worthless. shit. Yeah, it's worthless. I, I agree with that. Um, well, it, you know, it's, it's rough out there. Now, let me put you on the spot, right? Because it's, you know, it's, there, there's this like gender war out there right now. And I don't mean the fucking bullshit of, of I'm talking about man and female, okay? I say this in every podcast, all right? I'm not doing all that other he, she, whatever bullshit. There's a gender war out there. And, and it's like, Men are supposed to this and women are supposed to that. You know, the, the emasculation of men, the the, the 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 feminists talking about toxic masculinity. Shit's gotten weird now, right? So men men are now holding back on hollering at girls more or doing certain things or they feel like, you know, I was willing to pay for the first couple of dates, but now I hear and see, and we spoke about that and we'll, we'll okay. recite that, that, that female, um, that, you know, women are going out there and just using men for free dinners. They're, they're, they have multiple hinge dates lined up in one week. I'm seeing interviews on YouTube where these bitches are just saying, and they're saying it boastfully. And these aren't just young ones. These are in their mid-30s. And men are seeing it too, obviously. So we know better. The same way a woman would be like, you know, these guys are trying to fuck everything, whatever, whatever. So now it's gotten very weird. It's gotten very, very, you know, uh, um, pathetic in my in my opinion. You're, you're, you're going to go on a date. How do you feel about dates? Okay. Obviously, I'm going to jump the gun. You're a little old-fashioned. You're going to say, that man should definitely take care of the first date, right? All right, well, go further with it. When do you think things become more 50-50? Do they ever? Do you not care for it to be that? If you were going to give a man a chance as picky as you are, would it have to be on the pretense of he makes a certain amount of money where he can carry the majority of the bills? Not that you need him to pay your bills. I know that's a whole other different. I, I will never assume that on you. But, you know, that that... Old school gentleman ways, you should be paying as often as you can all the time. Do you believe in something like that or have you molded into something different with, with life? I mean, look, I'm at the end of the day, I'm old fashioned. Like, would I love it if a gentleman were to take care of everything for me? Yes, 100%. <clears throat> Do I necessarily expect it? No. I can, you know, I can handle my own stuff, it, but, but, I think I think I think first and foremost, if somebody's asking somebody out on a date, if you're the date initiator, right, then you should be the one who pays for the date. Okay, you know, like I don't know, not, it, I don't, I don't like traditionally speaking, it's usually the guy that asks the girl out. Mm. So then usually it's the guy that foots the bill. Okay, but we're dating now. Okay, okay, me and you're dating. We went on three dates. We've been talking for a couple months. Well, we probably would have been more. Would I pay the bill at the third date? Like, would I pop out my my credit card and slide it over to pay the bill? Well, yeah, why not? Yeah. Okay, but you say why not? That's a little bit different. And and now I'm, I'm kind of trying to talk for, for men in general because I, I know I got f fellas looking and I got homeboys who are going to, you know, talk some shit. Would it come out of you naturally? Don't just say that just to say it. Would it come out of you naturally? Do you naturally feel like, hey, man, once we're a relationship and you got me and I got you, no, I do think we should be 50-50. I think that's the right thing to do. There, there's no reason. I know. I understand what a, a gentleman should be. I understand what old-fashioned is, open doors, chivalry, all that good stuff. Right. And I'm not taking away from that. I think that those type of things should still exist to a great extent, to a great extent. But when it comes to these finances, when it comes to these forking out and stuff like that, does it come out of you naturally? Or do you feel like, no, no, if the man makes more than me, he should be the one always doing that? But if 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 somebody was making no, if somebody was making more than me and it was like exorbitantly more to where it was like no it's a big big deal. ass word, a lot of people aren't gonna know, but I know oh, what you well, meant. Go look ahead. it up, kids. Word <laughs> of the day, like you know where it was no big deal and and like right. you could you could spread the chatter everywhere because you're making far more money than I am. Then on that note, then yeah, I would expect you to right. pay for stuff. Why? Just simply because by the numbers, like yeah, it doesn't sense. hurt you to pay for stuff. Whereas you know it dings me, whatever. Okay. But if we're like, if we're a partnership and we're together, like, would would I be mad about going 50-50? No, because, hi, look up the term partnership. <laughs> like, that's that's what it is. It's a partnership. So let me let me let me bombard you with different questions, right? I, I want some replies, and and I hope people listening will, will will chime in on this. I want some comments on this, especially from these women, because a lot of it's directed to you. Okay, so we're dating, and um. Let's let's say you you dress uh, 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 somewhat provocatively, 
Okay, somewhat provocative. I'm not. I'm not saying past that. I don't even Tate know. I don't, <laughs> oh, you bitch! <laughs> oh, so glad you didn't say that so clearly because I know she's watching. <laughs> um, yeah, let's say something like that. You know, tight skirts, a lot of cleat. You're single. I'm sorry. Before we got together, you're single. Okay. So you dress a certain way. You know, you you paint the town with your girlfriends, you know, if that's your style, it doesn't matter, you know, tight skirt, whatever, whatever, because you're, you're trying, you, you, mama. you can say that, you know, I don't want to degrade it, I don't think there's nothing wrong with it, you're single, you're attracting the male, you're trying to just, whatever, whatever, there you go, excellent term, man, you got some good references, Um, now we're dating though, okay, now we're dating, do you feel like you still, I'm not trying to say right, I'm just using the word, do you feel like you still have that right to dress as such when you do your thing? Or do you feel like if I asked you or mentioned to you, hey, babe, can you you mind changing that outfit? That's that's a little bit too much. You know, that's, that's, that, that skirt is up there. Or, you know, uh, the, that cleavage is out there. Are you going to be more like, well, hold on, hold on. That's that's how you met me. Why why are you, you know, well, X, Y, and Z? Or are you going to, you know, for the, for the respect of your man, you're going to comply. Well, I would say I probably wouldn't wear anything to begin with. That would be like questionable unless, I don't know, unless I was dating a Quaker or something. But I, if if I was wearing something and you told me to, to go change because you weren't okay with it, but it was an outfit that I had worn, let's say you met me in or whatever. Okay. Then yes, I would throw it in your face that like you when you met me, I look like this. I mean, okay. Which but, if you you know, so let's so let's tell so, me, well, so, you're, you're just like a tortilla. So but, like, but let's I'm role sorry. but let's let's role play though, okay? okay? But you were single. Now you got a man. No, then I if it was like something upsetting, then I'd be like, all right, fine, pouty face, I'll go take it off, whatever. But I think, but I don't think I would. <clears throat> I don't. But then again, like I said, I don't think. You, but I you personally have, don't think I have anything in my closet. <laughs> well, yeah, but that, that's that, that's more actually legit, personal, right. you know, from from what we're speaking as far as in real life. But I retired my my ratchet. In in, in 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 a hypothetical fashion, I think that you know, women, women, females, younger age, middle age, whatever. Th this weird ego kicks in when we talk about what we're talking about right now, and you guys feel like you have to hold your ground. And this is how you met me, and, and I've heard, well, I'm a bad bitch. Well, look. You, you're dating a sexy girl. You should be happy, and I'm going to look sexy. Right. But but what you guys don't understand is you're causing us issues by wearing that because you are attractive. You do look good. Your cleavage is out. Your ass is not out, but it's you know nicely fitted into this skirt. You understand that guys are going to stare. You understand that if right. uh, I, I have to deal with gawking eyes, dudes turning around, breaking neck. If I walk away too far to go get a drink, somebody's going to want to pull up on you. This is going to make my... It's gonna boyfriend make your life, life tougher yeah. because of that. Because, because it, now you have to deal with yes, unwarranted stuff yes. that you wouldn't have to if, deal it, with if right? I didn't wear the spandex outfit. If, if we go yes. if we go back to Brickle where I met you and now you're dressed nice and, I, and, and whatever. Uh, no, I don't know. I, I just threw that out. I'm sorry. Well, if you really... <laughs> we met at the gym. That's what I'm going to okay. say. But if we're going out on uh, out on the town and you know, you're dressed nice, you're dressed you know, respectfully, whatever that is, and here I am, let's just say, I know this is cheesy as fuck but here i am with an open shirt you know like just abs flexing fucking are you, are you wearing gold are, chains are we, too nah, that's that's it no. the point is that i'm attracting female eyes right and and you're seeing the women look at me and gawk and you're saying hey bumpy and as we walk by oh if if, if if she leaves you come find me like all that you know uh, right. cat calling type shit but towards a man you, you you're gonna tell me that one that wouldn't bother you too, and I know some of us are strong enough to be like, nah, I'd feel good. You know, they're staring at my man. That's my piece of meat. I get it. I get that. Yeah. But you're entertaining. You're 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 giving more reason to be put in a fucking weird, Correct. awkward situation. Right. You're just yeah. You're setting yourself up for a situation you don't necessarily need to be exactly. in. Exactly. Yes, I get exactly. it. Exactly. It's it's kind of like the men who you know, I've, and I and I don't stick up for them at all. I think it's a scumbag move. Who are like, babe, the reason I cheated on you is because I was drunk. Okay, well, but why'd you get that drunk while I wasn't around? Especially if you knew, and you were at a strip club. So you had a strip club drunk. What do you think is going to happen? There's ass and titties all around you, and, and your guard is down. You don't have the discipline you have because you allowed, you allowed yourself to get drunk while, while there's temptations in front of you. That's a horrible excuse. I don't want to hear that drunk shit. You were wrong. You know what you were doing, but now you're blaming it on that. So I just feel like women should take that more in consideration because you, you guys really feel like, no, this is how you met me. This is how it's going to be. 
That's not a, well, that's not a cool way of going and, about well, it. Well, and just like just baseline, just baseline relationship stuff. If you have a partner and they say, "Hey, partner, you're doing this X Y Z," it bothers me and makes me feel like X Y Z. Can right. you Z Y X? Like that's a you know that's a that's a practical discussion to have. And if you know, like you said, if you can't, well, and first off, you can't be honest with your partner, especially about an outfit or the way it might make you feel or just the repercussions that can come with that outfit and going out and just looking like, you know, too hot to, to boss up. Like that's, you know, that's, that's fair. That's a fair ask of a guy to say, Hey, like, can you tone it down? You wore this when we were single. That's how you hooked line and sunk me. Exactly. There you go. There you you go. Right. Right. And how do you feel about the body count talk? (sighs) So tacky. You think, right? It's a little tacky. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, that's one that I'm not with. That, that one doesn't bother me. I'm not going to ask you for like, it. I'm not going to ask you for it, but that doesn't bother me. I don't care to ask well, I you. I wouldn't tell you anyway. And, 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 and this is why I don't I don't know why men do this, because the minute you ask it, you sorry, motherfucker. You think she's really going to tell you? You think she's really going to tell you? Well, you're just setting, I mean, whatever. It's a trick question. Like you're setting yourself up for failure with that question. Right, right. Whether, whether you're the one asking the question or whether you're the one answering the question. Yeah, that is true. Um, I just think it's a stupid approach. Like why? You know, again, we, we mentioned Fresh and Fit in other podcasts. They ask that so often. The body count, the body count, the body count. Like, Bruh, you, you, what are you what are you telling me? Like, like, that's none of your business. This person was living their life however they were. I, I don't know why that. I got a body count. I don't need nobody know my body count, and I know that doesn't change what my body, wh- how I am as a person, how great I'll be if I was your boyfriend, how great I'll be as a husband, a father, whatever. No, that doesn't change anything. My body count was just pure experiences. That was me wilding out, having fun because I was single. I didn't break no hearts. I didn't lie or mislead anybody. I was just living life, period. End of story. Why would you hold that against me? It just makes no sense. Yeah, and not for nothing. Like, and I mean, great. I, I will. The only thing I will say about body count is like, I got friends that are like way up there that I'm like, damn, y'all were busy. Even if you want to just break it down in terms of like years, like you're 46, I'm 45, right? Mm-hmm. There's 365 days a year. Mm-hmm. Okay. So like even if you want to start, let's cap. We'll start at eighteen. Okay? Yeah, if you do that, it's gonna fuck with you. Add up the add up how many years have gone by. Add up those days. Mm-hmm. Like that's a lot of days. <laughs> so you know, even like, yeah, it's stupid. It's I'm, it, I, I think that the the um, guys trying to be hooked on this purity thing. Okay. I'll tell you, what, I don't, I don't know, man. That's y'all. I mean, that's cute. That's I don't want that look, purity. Don't look, give me look, no look. fucking angel. That's cute. <laughs> that's cute. But that's also ridiculous, and it's also a little bit creepy. Right. That is true. It's super creepy. That it's is almost true. like wanting, like. Yep. Yep. Like, I know where like you're going. That, that, like that. That starts getting a little like you're veering into like weird territory with that. With right. This, like purity. You're, you're, you're telling me you prefer a virgin, really? Like that's what I mean. That's I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Not, 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 where does that take you? Yeah, creepy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. exactly. That just seems weird. Yeah, yeah. I, I would I would agree with you on that, and I think guys make too big of a deal about that. But I mean, it is what it is. I'm not on that category, but I definitely want your opinion on that. Now, we were talking about how ideally you would want a man if he had enough money to you know be that guy, right? Why is it that men don't get to say the same thing and and be able to do so without being clowned on or looked down on? Because if you carry the weight, not the weight, but you you're the breadwinner. It's supposed to be less masculine of me. You know, like like I have a I have a good friend right now. And I know him and his lady are watching. I'm not gonna say their names, but I know that they're not bothered by it. His girlfriend banks, okay, banks. She's a realtor, and she's a, one of the top realtors in, in South Florida. And I'm talking about she banks, 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 okay? Banks, banks. Banks, banks. I don't, I don't know what the numbers are, but easily 300 banks, plus banks. better a year, okay? And him, he's like on the 100 bracket, give or take, whatever it is, right? That can be a, a, a weird situation there because one, the man has been taught to think that he should be the breadwinner, so that can fuck with his ego. We start thinking, damn, how, is she looking at me as less of a man? Does she think she has the right to talk to me a certain way now because she is the breadwinner? Things of that nature. 
How do you feel about that? Would it bother you to date somebody seriously if you make 20, 30 racks more than they do? Not really. You looked the other way and thought for a second. No, I mean, yeah, only because it's like, well, the, the, to me, the, the balance out for that is like, I look at it this way. Like if we both live in the same house and we're splitting bills 50-50, mm -hmm. right? That's fair, right? Of course. Okay. And then like, as long as we're splitting the bills 50-50, I don't care if you make 20 or 30 racks less than me. Like, doesn't really, it doesn't affect my life, right. really. You know, I mean, I'm still able to sustain. You're still keeping up with bills with me at a 50 50 rate. Why should that, why should that really have any bearing? I mean, whatever. And if, like, if you felt any less of a man because you pulled in 20 or 30 less racks and, like, empty the dishwasher a little more often or, like, take my car to get clean once in a while or, like, vacuum, you know? Like, do stupid shit. Like, just, it's the little things, dude. Like, but seriously. If, but, if, but if we both but work... But that's, that's just if you yeah, felt yeah, some yeah. type of way right, about okay. it. Like, I'm, in, order to, in order to satisfy your, your feeling of, of less. Yeah, I don't this. care. Like, it doesn't... Stuff like that doesn't matter. It's just, like, are you pulling your weight just on a surface level as an equal partner, yes, you know, check a box, yes, no, maybe. Like, if you are good, let's let's say that this podcast was gonna find your future husband. Okay, let's 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 swing for the fences, Jill. <laughs> Jill, that's horrible no. form. That's horrible form. You're it never was, gonna <laughs> on purpose. Um, you said you were picky. Picky. Okay. I know I'm picky, and when and when I've when I've talked about my pickiness with with close friends who want to hear it, you know, I start going down the list. Yeah, there's a list. You mentioned that you know people have lists. Everybody they, got lists. Okay, everybody has their little boxes they want to check off. So in that one of your boxes, do you have a financial preference? No, I actually don't. You never, you never given that enough thought. No, that's not one of those things. Not really. Well, that's, that's. I mean. If you're asking, you don't want a broke do ass. I, do you don't I, want a broke ass. No, I don't want a broke. Course, I don't obviously. want a broke ass bum. Like I want somebody that look. If you, not a lot of people work as hard as I do <laughs> at okay. my level of working that I do because I operate at a high a high level. But if you if you're a hardworking individual, like and you're pulling your weight and you're fifty fifty with me, I don't care. I don't care. You make less. That's fine. Not a big deal. Do you have a good pension? That's important. I have no pension and I have to pay out of pocket for my insurance. So the questions I would ask is, do you have a good pension? Do you have insurance? No, I'm kidding. Uh, I'll see your bet and I'll raise it. I don't, <laughs> I don't even got insurance. I'm over here like- 401k. Boy, you better, you better stay healthy and take care of the hell out of yourself, man. <laughs> no, but I, I get that. Obviously, you, you get to that age where you want to be like, well, hold on. Let's talk about you know that, that end piece. We want to be secure, both of us. So- I can see where that you know. makes that makes sense, but not the actual peak financial. It's like how like much honestly, you make. I would be more concerned with having a partner that's like, yeah, I have like eighty grand in debt. That's the type of mm. that's the type of dude I'd I'd be like, I'm I think I'm good. That's you a know? good point. Like if you can make less money than me, but please don't come with like you know, okay, a, bar a carousel cart of debt. So that that would be considered a form of baggage. Let's go to the other kind of, the yeah. other term. That's very used when it comes to baggage. Could you take in a man with um with kids? Well, by now I, I would assume if you got with a man, his kids, the kids would be almost off the floor. <laughs> Just kidding. If no, if a man, if a man had you know a uh, ten, fifteen year old somewhere around that you know age, you know, one or two kids like that. Is he a pain in the ass? Come on now, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you know, he might be one of those bad kids. So you would gauge in on the kids then? No, I'm just messing with Why? you. Why? Well, I would yeah, definitely right. weigh out the entire situation if they were like, yeah, my son, you know. Just got out of jail. <laughs> yeah, my, my son Thor, who just got out of jail, who, you know, is is apparently prone to being having violent outbursts. And he's like yeah, yeah. on all this medication. Like, but he can he move in? Oh, he's also been violent towards animals. Or like something. I'd be like, yeah, no, I'd have to take all this under consideration first. Heavy consideration. Right, right. No, I agree with that. Okay. What if you get with me, we're dating, and I say, Oh yeah, that's um that's that's Kelly. That's Kelly texting me. Oh, who's Kelly, babe? I just a homegirl of mine, just a friend. Do you think that's a red flag? Like do you think that no, guys should not no. Be saying that they have a female friend because that Absolutely automatically not. means that they, they were fucking half fucked or something like that? Absolutely not. I no? have plenty of friends that are male friends. I probably have more male friends than I have female friends. Now, you know right now, Paul, you know 
you know right there there's a lot of backlash from anybody listening yeah 100 percent. Right? you know I get they it. all threw hot dogs at That's you fine. right now whatever okay <laughs> I, I thought for a second look, you, you were gonna <laughs> nah, I, look from working in production and most of my friends are have become you know they've they've become friends through work okay like they've become work friends or like a lot of my friends are like most of the people that i hire on a lot of these freelance jobs and i end up spending like a billion hours on set with them we've been in the trenches like come mud snow like you name it like these are my like these are my homies. The same way you just said Kelly's your home girl, mm. I have homeboys. You're you're more than welcome to meet them. Hell, I hope you guys become friends. I right. hope you love each other dearly and you homie out harder than we ever homied out. Right. And you thank me for introducing you to them. That's how I hope that goes. But do I think it's a red flag? It can be at times. Of course. You know, but every situation's different. Every yes. situation's different. But at least with, with my group of guys, they're like my group of guys from work and Okay, so that's that's the homegirl thing. I agree with you, by the way. Yeah. I, I agree with you big time on that. And, and of course, every situation is different. Like, if you say, that's my homegirl, but you used to fuck, oh, it's a little awkward. No, I don't know, like, how long ago? Like, oh, well, I don't know that I want him around because uh, when I see him, I kind of, oh, fuck, they fucked. You know, it's weird. I don't know. Maybe you can scratch it out or maybe you're just saying it now and you never been in a situation. I still have a couple of those and they're still dear friends, so, like, whatever. <laughs> and you haven't touched them since? No. Okay, well, it didn't work out twenty years ago, but we're still friends. It's all good. I, yeah, again, I agree with that. I told I'm somebody who can like look we're past all that. adults here. Come on, I, exactly, you know? I, look, exactly. At this age and at this age and this stage in my life, I am so tired from the bullshit. I am so tired of like trying to fake anything or putting any effort or energy into faking something or lying about something or sugarcoating anything. What you see is what you get. That is it. I am sorry. I hope it's entertaining. <laughs> Like, but that's it. I'm not, you know, I'm not here to play games anymore. I'm not here to waste time. Like, but, but this is it. It's like, um, you know, you're going to have like the OGs around, like things are going to be like that. It, there's never going to be any lie. There's never going to be any red flags or me, me not to trust. And that's, you know, a thing I like to still offer to everybody. And this is probably why I don't date as often as I do. I will give anybody the fair opportunity to fuck me over once. You do it twice, shame on me. Mm -hmm. But I just, I'm not in the position anymore where. So is it safe to say that you're not a jealous person? I'm not really that jealous. No. I'm not. I mean, can I get jealous? Yes. But it, I mean, I've seen, I've seen jealousy come out of people I know on levels that like, I didn't know, it was, I didn't know it was possible to be like that crazy of a motherfucker <laughs> on some jealous shit. So like, I feel I, I feel in comparison to that, I'm not. I'm pretty, but once you give me a reason to doubt or once you break my trust or you lie with, I'm like a light switch. There's no coming back. I'm gonna shut your ass off. We're done. Are you a ghoster? I'm not a ghoster, I don't think. No, you haven't just ghosted a guy by not wanting to address him, talk, follow up. Just like, you know what? Fuck that. I wasn't I'm a, feeling I'm it. a victim of mutual ghosting. I'm a mutual <clears throat> ghoster. Like, I feel like we both ghost. Like, we both kind of just... That's happened to you? Or you yeah, feel like... happens all the or time. Or that's the only time... Okay, so somebody out there saying, no, you're probably the one ghosting. You're just putting it on the guy. So you're saying that he didn't try, so you didn't try? Or he didn't try hard enough, so you didn't try hard enough? Yeah. And then you guys just let it dissipate. Yeah. I can, I can it's see It's just that. like a, you know, like a, oh, you know, they're not going to make any effort or they're not making the grand effort I want. Well, then why should I make an effort? I'm just like, yeah. If you were, if we were. Like, to me, effort, effort is, effort is more attractive than anything. But if you're not making effort, I'm slowly going to lose interest. If, if we were dating and things were good, would would you think it's that big of a deal that I should be texting you good mornings naturally, organically, and if I didn't, that's not a good sign? A good morning text is always nice, but like, who cares if you get one or don't get one? It's not that big of a deal. Mission PT Rehab and Recovery is your one-stop shop for all physical therapy and wellness needs. Our licensed physical therapists provide customized hands-on treatments for all sports injuries, accidents, workers' comp, and more. No doctor prescriptions required for the first 30 days. 
Mission PT has one-on-one -on -one personal training for sports-specific needs, as well as general weight loss and strengthening. We are conveniently located steps from Dayland Mall. Call today for your free 30-minute consult, 786-409-5589. That's 786-409-5589. Mission PT, perform at your best. So one of the, one of the problems that I have with, with what we're talking about is I, I get it when, 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 when somebody... When somebody looks suspect, when somebody's suspect, the way they act, the way they dress, the way they are, so on and so forth, then at that point, you obviously should take things into consideration in regards to every action they make, the things they say, how serious is it because the shoe doesn't seem like it fits. I get that. You know, gut instinct kicks in, things of that nature. But if you don't smell something fishy and you do have the good mornings coming at you, you do have the, hey, beautiful, Things of that nature. God damn it! Don't don't play it down because I see that happening too much. I see women talking about it too much. Like they think we're all full of shit. Well, if you if you think that, and I'm really making an effort here, I'm not telling every girl, "Hey, beautiful." Or I'm not texting every girl, "Good morning," and I'm trying to do it with you, and you, and you're calling it shit. You're not allowing us to grow. Well, that's I mean that's not fair. If some if if you're actually sending good morning messages to somebody and they're not reciprocating and being appreciative of you doing such and saying it shit, that's messed up. Well, obviously, if they don't reciprocate or you don't you get a hint of them being dry, then yeah, you should turn around, and walk away. Right. What I'm saying is, if you might say good morning right back and whatever, but okay, like I was talking to this girl like like six months ago, eight months ago, I think she was the first chick that I met on Hinge out of the three. And she waited till our second date to tell me, to admit to me, she said, look, I'm not going to lie to you. Every time you say beautiful, because I thought she was beautiful. And I would say, you know, whatever, like beautiful type comments, uh, uh, compliments. And um, she told me one day we were getting deep into a conversation. She goes, I'm not going to lie to you. I hate when guys say that. I said, and I just looked at her like, holy shit. For the last three weeks, I've been, you know, trying to throw every cute not overly exaggerative compliment your way to make her know that man i really think you're beautiful you're fit you're this you're that and she says oh i think guys they abuse that word they water it down blah 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 blah. and it, that wasn't why we stopped dating whatever but one that was a reality check weird, for me. Though. exactly that was a reality because now immediately it threw me off i'm like why is she hitting on the word beautiful i'm making and i'm making a genuine effort here and there it's falling short now i start thinking well hold up is this going to be a, a, a common trait? Or am I always going to fall short? How was extra she, do I have she, to go? Was she able to take compliments like to begin with? Or is she not a good compliment receiver? Um, well, not until she told me that, Jill. Until she told me that, it seemed like she was good at receiving compliments. It's just... It, it, and then the insecurity came. I guess. So when she admitted it to me, again, the reason we stopped talking was different. Right. She works too hard. Lived in Brickell, was very got up at five every morning, so she didn't like to leave her house after eight. And I'm like, bitch, my last client is always at nine, nine fifteen every day of the week, minus Saturday and Sunday. You work Saturdays and you get off at eight. And you know, it's just me it was just a weird thing. Right. So that was what what okay, this is not worth it. This is gonna be too hard to make it happen. But when she threw that at me, I took it as like, damn, here I've been throwing these words at her with purpose, and I really want her to know and think that I she knows she's beautiful come on when you know you're good looking to a certain extent you know it you got confidence well not for nothing too why did she wait three weeks to tell you that something that you were doing that you were obviously putting effort and yeah. like genuineness into why did she wait three weeks to be like hey you know what mm -hmm. just, let me stop you down real quick and ask you this whatever your use of this word beautiful are you just throwing it around or like this is my reasoning blah blah like well said well said like okay if um communication kids there you go key. Uh, I mean, that's, I just told this to my client, Claudia. What's up, Claudia? Shout out to you, girl. Um, I'm all looking for we, we were <laughs> We were talking about this and I told her, man, every relationship, not intimate relationships, every relationship, friendship, co-workership, and it just doesn't matter. Communication, communication. There's something you don't like. If there's something that you want different. If she was calling me, okay, I hate the word daddy. Ladies, if you're interested and you want to holler at me, don't ever call me fucking daddy. I don't want to be called daddy. It's kind of creepy. It's fucking creepy as hell. It's disgusting. And I think the guy who likes it, I don't care who you are, bro. If I did a background check and I found out what you went through and your upbringing and so on and so forth, somewhere there, you you want to feel masculine. You haven't felt that oomph -ness, So you like daddy. 
or you ain't taking this girl serious. You, you just like it for the whole sexual experience or whatever. You're thinking about it differently on some porn shit because that's what they're calling daddy or whatever, poppy. I hate it because he, yeah, exactly. I immediately turn fucking green. Like, what are you doing calling? And I got a homegirl, <laughs> Nisa, I love you. <laughs> I got a homegirl. She says some wild shit. She's my dog. I love her to death. You know, she's one of those that if she's comfortable enough with the guy, she'll call him daddy. And she goes extra on some other shit. But, you know, I'm like, girl, that's, that's, and she's got an amazing dad, by the way, an amazing dad. He fucking that guy's awesome to have an awesome relationship so I don't know where that comes from I think more she's just caught up in like she thinks guys like that most guys like it I immediately go into like why would you refer to me as a father figure there's nothing sexual there there's nothing what, what, what makes you want to do that I, I don't get it I just don't I mean unless you're dating an older man and that's like your thing then otherwise it's kind of weird <laughs> even if it's kind of weird you think that's where, well, you know, obviously it stems from the whole girls, right. girls who got, you know, daddy issues. That's, you know, they didn't have a fatherly figure, blah, blah, blah. But do you think it started from the youth going out with older guys? I don't, I mean, I don't know where it, where its use originated from, but I would assume it was, would be from a, a, you know, like, I don't know. I mean, like, a girl dated an older man. It'd be funny to try to do a background check on that. Where did, where did, where did the word daddy come from in regards to this sexual, I don't know, maybe it was, yeah. Oh, sorry. It probably was porn. Probably. It probably was Blame porn. Yeah, it probably was porn and, and somewhere there. Somebody somewhere thought it was really hot. In right. A scene and exactly. Like and then took they off. Yeah. Yeah. So he's like, I'm going to use that. Daddy. Yeah. And that, and that person who had helped blow it up was disturbed and didn't have a father. And that's why they found it, you know, cool to do so. Uh, Dad issues know. everywhere. Do you, do you get out? all the, 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 the fine details out the way on a first date or two because fuck that, I'm not trying to waste time. We're grown folks here. I don't say I get out all the fine details on the first date. I mean, I don't know. Like sometimes, sometimes some first dates will feel like, you know that scene in Uncle Buck? <laughs> Which one? That's an old movie. With Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with John, the, with John Ken. Yeah, the I mean, boy. they're sitting in front of each other, I think at like the kitchen table. And he's like, where do you live? What do you drive? Are you married? How come? Why not? You know, like, where do you work? Like he's totally interrogating him to like, mm -hmm. and whatever. I mean, I figure, I feel like I do that sometimes a little bit on first dates just because. I, I feel like there's nothing wrong with it as long as it's not in, in such an interrogating form. No, no, no. I mean, I'm funny about it. I mean, well, you crack yourself up, obviously. I do. That's all that matters, right? Because <laughs> exactly. I'm like, at least one of us is having a good time. <laughs> you know, maybe you're laughing at me. That's cool. You know, you're not going to you're not gonna leave you. No. <laughs> Love me. Oh, man, we're doomed, Jill. We're doomed. <laughs> how do you feel about this uh, alien shit? Dogs. That, this, oh, yeah. By the way, how many dogs do you have right now? I have three. And you told me one of them was 17, yeah. a presumed 17. Kip. Might be older. Old man Kip. He's 17. Rat terrier? He's a like a wire hair terrier mix. Small one. Small guy. And then you have two other bigger ones. Two yellow labs. How old are they? Uh, Ryder is six and Loki is almost one. That definitely helps with not carrying the fucking date and step out when you got some great dogs that you just love to death. There's no more room in the bed, you know? Oh, they sleep in the bed with you? Yeah, or do. you're doomed. Do. I know. Oh, a guy doesn't, have a, a, no, a guy doesn't have a chance now. Uh, I mean, not in that bed. It's a queen size bed, and we're already a tight fit. So, so yeah, no. <laughs> we, just, we just lost a few potential candidates. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is, but hey. You know, I got, I got dogs that keep me company for now. Like, Four and one. Those two aren't going anywhere for a while. Yep. Uh, I've been actually telling my mom maybe Maybe that's, maybe, maybe that's a sign I'm telling my mom I'm fucking I'm itching to get a A dog I gave my two dogs away uh, A while back They were just ginormous Ginormous And I got them when I was with my ex Like five years prior Four years prior And um I just couldn't I couldn't keep up with them Too busy Too much responsibility Like fucking kids You know I mean I remember when you went, you get a small dog that's what I was thinking. That's why I told my mom. I was she like, damn, mom, if I can get a small dog. But it has to be very, um, I'm probably going to lean on, to be quite honest with you, I'm probably going to lean on the schnauzer because they don't shed. 
my brother has always had schnauzers. He's got another one still to this day, my older brother. And I love them. Minus the screechy bark, because they're very, you know. They're 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 great dogs. I love them. So you go to the pound. They're so it's another th- yeah, I, 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 I saw right what's now. going around. Yeah. Everybody go to the pound and adopt a dog. They're so overrun. Yeah. Shelters. I, I'm glad this, I saw a couple adopt of homies posting. You posted it, right? Too? What? That that shelter thing that was going on, the, the overpacked them? Where, where, Maybe. I don't know if I I the, no, if it wasn't you, it was somebody else. Not, not the recent one. About, no, recently, like no, the, not yeah. the recent one. That's where they have like 110, 100, 110 dogs in crates in the yeah, old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Miami, right, right, yeah. Health services building. My my homeboy. Uh, shout out to my homeboy Dissum. Um, he was he was posting that trying to you know trying to help out with that. Yeah. He's always trying to help out. Uh, I don't do that often enough. You know, repost things to try to help. My understanding is that they weren't the. Pro- I mean, obviously, the problem is the dogs are being housed in a facility that is closed down. Even though they do have employ, from what I understand, they do have employees there that are taking care of the dogs, or taking them out, and like you know, doing rotations and walking them. But they're not allowing volunteers to come in and help, and that's part of the reason people are upset. Is that there's over a hundred dogs in there, and they're not letting the volunteers come in to help rotate the dogs and assist them with walking the dogs. What was their reason for it? I don't know. It's Miami Dade County, We're all fucked up here. So, shit. I will tell you what, I, I I love us some Florida because right now all that talks going on about bringing the mask mandate back and all that oh, bullshit. Oh, dude, no. The fuck that's out a, of that's that's gonna be a no for me, dog. Not only that, the Santis ain't having it. Miami ain't playing that shit. There's no way you're gonna get Florida to abide. Once by again, I've never been more proud to be a Floridian. That's right. During these times, I'm like, that's you know what? Right, Everybody you know. says fuck Florida. Ha ha. Completely agree with you. And and by the way, on that note, your tattoo is that LA? Yeah. It's pretty fucking my, gangster. My, my whole homage to LA. Badass female with the bandana on. And she's tossing up the LA with the you hands. No, she's not me. People are always like, is that you? I'm like, no, it's not oh, me. No, I mean, she's not, got blonde it's, hair. It's not. It's very, very similar. What do you mean? It, it looks. We both have blonde hair. I mean, cause she's got a fucking bandana over her face so the eyes could be you if you probably just smoked one yeah eyes never lie chico okay okay there uh i was about to say joe pesci fuck <laughs> i look like joe pesci no i was oh. gonna uh, uh al pacino i you know what because he's the one who said it i went to dinner with al pacino shut up now you're dropping now, this now you're, yeah now i'm like okay i have a celebrity story there you go i went to dinner once with al pacino and then the next day well he invited me at dinner to go to a private screening for his movie called Salome, maybe which was like, like a take on shakespeare's salome okay and he redid it and it was called Salome, maybe um and he invited me the next day to go to the premiere at a private screening at a theater on uh, wilshire boulevard in beverly hills how did that happen uh my very good friend who's a british model was living with me um that summer in, in california she was staying with me and she was doing voiceover work and she was the one who was doing voiceover work for Al's movie. And uh, whatever, we got invited to dinner one night and me, her, and my other best friend Erica went and we went to dinner at the, um, where were we? The Beverly, the Beverly Hills Hotel. Did he, did he shoot his shot? Did he what? Did he shoot his shot? No, I mean, you know, he's like, dude, he was just, He's Al Pacino, man. Like, he was just, he's a total, like, at least with us, he was a total gentleman. He was cracking jokes. He was really impressed with my fitness at the time. So he was asking me all these questions about bodybuilding and, like, was just, like, really just, like, wowed out by my physique. And then he was trying to rehome his dog. He had a greyhound named Mega Man. And he was trying to, like, rehome him. And I was going to adopt him. I didn't. Man, greyhounds look too damn skinny for me, man. But they're cool. They're so cool. Are they? Yeah, dude. They're sweet, sweet dogs. What makes them that cool? They're just like big couch well, potatoes. Dogs are all dogs are awesome. Yeah, but greyhounds, they're just, they're very, I don't know, they're so aerodynamic. They're just cool. They are, yeah, they are. Who's, by the way, who's considered the fastest dog? Is it them? Would you know? So. That's a good question, right? I mean, those are the ones who are used for racing, right? So I would think it's a greyhound. Makes sense. And and to, to piggyback what you said, they are very aerodynamic. Short hair, very short hair body very lanky very slinky you know um i've had a in my life i've had i'm saying as with the family with the family doberman 
One of our favorites. I loved Dover. That was one of our favorites. A Chow Chow. I don't think we ever had a dog with so much personality. It, it was, This dog was a fucking human. It was crazy. Was it mean? Not with us, but I have heard about Charles Bean, but he was he was aggressive with any other yeah. body, anybody who would come near the fence. He was he was. You know, Charles were originally bred for, right? No, I don't. Charles were originally bred. I, I'm pretty certain Charles were originally bred to be the guardians of, like emperors' castles, um, somewhere in Asia. Really? Yeah. They look kind of Asian. Was that racist? That wasn't racist, right? Yeah. I mean, if a dog was gonna look Asian, a child might be it. No, I don't take it as a racist comment. <laughs> but then again, I, you got a tiptoe now. Generation man. X, so I don't take much as a racist comment. I'm like, Is that what no. we are? We're Generation X. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Yeah, we're the generation that became thirty at age ten and still feels thirty at age fifty. There you That's go. Us. And then the people before us are the boomers. The boomers, and then the people after us is Generation Z. Z. And then now this, then, this, this. Well, no, we have millennials. Where do millennials come into play in this? Who are the fucktards that are around right now? <laughs> what are they called? Softies. Yeah, that's. Pussies. Mm. <laughs> well, now this generation A, generation alpha, is su supposedly going to be the generation to like put the shit back on track. Meaning the, the, the who's the five year olds, the 10 year olds? The, the, the 10 year olds. The 10 year olds? That's going to be who gets us out of this funk? Mm -hmm. Supposedly. Speaking of funk, you a Trump fan? You know what? <laughs> I've become more of a fan recently, let's say, than I was prior. You know, like, I don't like him as a person. Right. As a human being, I, I think he sucks. He's a piece of garbage. He's vile. He's just not pleasant. He's not kind. But I do have more respect for a lot of the stuff that he said now than i did a couple years ago or even before the last election i will happily admit that um the lesser of the two evils are you looking at it more well i mean if you're asking me who i'm voting for <laughs> i mean i wasn't but i was gonna actually go well, or do, do you get way. into it like I, that I, I wouldn't joke i wouldn't vote for joe biden if he was the only person on the docket do you pay attention to the politics to a certain extent as of right now, at least? I do. And if it was, excuse me, I forgot how to say the young guy's name. He's got a weird ass name. The Indian looking guy. He's an Indian looking guy? Yeah. At this time, I'm not being racist. He looks like his back, his family's from India, but he's American as fuck. Ram, Rama's, Rama's something. He's 37 years old, 38 years old. Oh, for a second, I thought you were going to tell me that like Kumar... No. Was running because he, you know, he's in he's in politics. Which Kumar? Kumar like from White Harold Castle? And, yes, Harold and Kumar. I swear to God, that's who I thought you were referring to. But he's not running really for. But he's not running for president. I don't know, but it'd be real fucking cool if he did, wouldn't it? I did hear the Rock say he was going to run, but not uh, this year. But he said he's going to run. You know just, what? You just know, what we need another actor. Well, that's what I was going to say. But uh, all the way up until like he shot himself in the foot when he won it. When he he just did a video with Oprah. Yeah, I saw I, that where yeah. they were like, hey, guys, we both make hundreds of billions of dollars a year. But won't you open up your hearts and wallets to exactly. help the people of Maui? It's like, bitch, Oprah, you, why don't you just give back that you, land you, you bought you, and like yeah. get, get, like, get like boxable or like a container building company to come and like rebuild some houses for people? How about Some you do houses. That? The bitch has the bankroll to just rebuild the whole fucking community. What are we talking about? Exactly. Yeah. So, but it, and I'm being modest, just saying, hey, like, could you give some house, some houses? I'm you know, not, I'm not. You know, they're asking people for donations and then not, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if they've donated themselves privately, but the point is they both make more money than the majority of the people on this planet. So like, how about you open up your wallet a little bit more? Just saying. As much money as Mayweather has, he doesn't have their money. No. Without a doubt. And he's given a ton of money. Exactly. And he doesn't have rock money and definitely not Oprah money. And he gave a ton of money. And, you know, I thought that was, I thought that was pretty dope that he did that. I definitely didn't expect that. Um, I don't know. Uh, do you watch UFC? Yeah. You do? Yeah. I know Dana White's definitely, Dana White and the company is doing a lot for them. Um, I, I'm sure there's more to come, but they're definitely on that. You know, Rock, I love Rock as an actor. I think as a human being, he's pretty fucking awesome. He's funny as hell. He's, he's, he's talented in so many ways. And we've been watching them, you know, from day one, from football all the way through WWE, through all the movies, and here we are. But as a president, 
I think that his I think his he's uh he's he's been already how do you call it um fuck man when you when you turn somebody evil when you uh corrupted cor- yeah but that's that wasn't the word I was he's been infiltrated on but that wasn't the word not even manipulated it was a different word forget about the word but paid off the, nah, paid off wouldn't make sense he's too paid he, he's just he's he's been ah shit what's the fucking word man sounds like. Ah, I don't know Two what. syllables? No, we're gonna get stuck. Uh. Let, let's not do it. Regardless, he's been compromised. Oh, okay. There, we there go. you go. He's been compromised, and he, he, I just don't like that. I have nothing against the left. I'm not left or right. According to my friends, when we did this questionnaire thing, I was like, "Yo, what am I? I don't know what the fuck I am because I'm not into politics like that." And they asked me questions from left and right, and it seemed like I was right down the middle. It seemed like I favored a little bit more left. The, based upon whatever it is. What's, I'm so stupid. I'm like, what sides, what side? Which side's what kickball team? Democrats and. and who's uh, on the left and who's on the right? Republicans. Republicans are right, Democrats are on the left. Got it. Hollywood is left. Period. Hollywood, and when I say Hollywood, I mean everything on fucking TV, everything yeah. on cable, all of it. Left. Left, 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 all the way around. And I feel like that's where The Rock is compromised. Yeah. I don't think that. If he became president, it'd be The Rock saying much of anything. He's just going to be another puppet. I happen to like not the Trumps of the world because of like what you said. Because I agree, Trump talks too much shit. He's too outspoken. You you can't be that that regular ass Trump. Have you when, read when his book? No, no, I haven't. He's yeah, well, just so vile. But when you're already a billionaire and you don't need the lobbyists to help you become a president yeah i I'm, i think i'm gonna shoot for you before i shoot for the others yeah because he, these lobbyists not, are, yeah these lobbyists are, exactly you're not bought you're not bought you're already a billionaire you have no reason to become a president except that you actually probably fucking care and you want to do something that's going to help our nation out otherwise just keep making bank and just shit on everybody no he actually did that this guy the young guy that i was talking about i can't say his Indian name guy. right yeah He's another billionaire. Not the guy who was um, at Yahoo or Yahoo, no, no. I don't know. I know that we're gonna get tore up because we don't know who the fuck this guy's name is, man. And I don't feel like looking it up on the phone. But regardless, he's a billionaire, and I, and and he doesn't seem. Yeah, he's running as a Republican, but you can tell he's in the middle-ish, and he just wants to yeah. do away with the bullshit what do you think and the of corruption. I tell you what, man. After seeing him on Joe Rogan, man, I I, I like the guy. I do. I do. I, I like that he's... He can do hella push-ups. The fact that he's trying to expose the shit that he's exposing yeah. means a lot. And I like Kennedy. I, I do. I mean, there's still... I mean, of course, there's a couple of things I'm like, nah, that he's like, nah. We don't see eye to eye on. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, not for nothing, too. Like, that family shed mad blood for this country. That's right. Three and, people, right? Three yeah. people, two, three of them yeah. died. And yeah. he's got money. He doesn't, you know, like that family's got money. He doesn't need to run. Like he's right. he's old. Like he he could chill. He could like, he's married to the. Did you know he's married to the actress from Curb Your Enthusiasm? No. He's married to the wife of Larry David. I uh, no, I didn't know. Yeah, in real life. I'll go figure. So like you know he must be funny, but like you know he could just ride off into the sunset with her. Like you don't have to do this. I heard his book was fucking. It was Pretty, good. Yeah, man. That's what everybody says, you know, and then the shit that and plus the shit that he's exposing and all that. Like when you drop your nuts and you're exposing something that can get you killed. Yeah. You 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 already got me a little bit on your side. Yeah. Cuz you you at that point you're a black sheep. You're standing out on your own. You're not doing like the rest of the others, you know? So you got my attention and I'm an ex-con. I can't even well, I can't vote. I have to reinstate my 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 voters right. I don't know that I want to. Cause I just I don't believe in it, Jill. I mean, it's hard to believe in a system that's uh, yeah. that's failed, that's that's been proven to fail, and that's a broken system. How do you believe in that? Yeah, I, I feel like. Well, here's here's a here's a conspiracy theory for you. Okay, I like those. Okay, so like, <laughs> so so we have a supposed new pandemic right. coming this fall, right? Right. Now you know it's supposed to be the worst yet. Whatever. What if that impedes our ability to have an election day? And therefore, and this fool carries on. Mm-hmm. And then this fool can, is not capable of carrying on, so then they make Kamala the next. Or 
Or like what happens if we can't have a proper, you know, like a proper election day or like you have to do it by like voting or mail, you know, like something, something that's not, you know, where they like, can't, where they can't catch the, the correct. Where it, the it fraud. can't be. Yeah. It, it can't be deemed as accurate because you can't monitor it. I like, mean, that, that sounds very, very, yeah, very realistic. I mean, it does. Every time something, pretty much every time in the world when something really fucked up is happening, the media left. See, that's the part you always got to remember. The media is left. That's all left. So when something huge happens that we should all know about and it should never get swept under the rug, when it's being swept under the rug and they're trying to get your attention with some outlandish wild shit that's going on, it seems like there's corruption going on and there's a reason and we just don't know it. So pandemic number two coming up. Why? Because it's going to happen during the election. So, yeah, I, I, um, you know, Epstein's Island. Mm -hmm. Every time I bring that up, man, I just get furious. And right away I just think, I can't trust nobody. Nobody out there. None of them. None of them. You have to stand on a whole different level for me to believe in you because Epstein's Island really just was was the icing on the cake. The list of people that were on that plane um, thing. It, it, the manifest, yeah. The, the, the book. The flight the, log. The flight log. Yeah. Mind-blowing. 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 And when you hear all the this, the sick conspiracies and the, and the the Alex Jones of the world and different people who who say shit about what these elitists do and how they you know fuel their sickness and you know I can't get over Epstein's Island, Jill. I can't. I can't. I can't. It's it's so sickening to me. And not only is it sickening, the fact that that guy beat the first case so easily, walked out of the first case that he beat. I don't know if you remember that he beat a, a prior case mm -hmm. to this. Walks out with. A, a young chick who was probably like 18, 19 gets in the car out of the courtroom and then goes off. And then sure enough, a couple of years later, we have, again, Epstein's Island. It's just bananas. And when you hear all the little details that were there, but now they all disappear. Now it's all swept under the rug. How are we sweeping this under the rug? How are we sweeping under the rug that Bill Clinton was on that flight 27 times? How, how are we? And then... Out of nowhere, the Clinton's uh, pool boy gets killed. It's crazy shit. Cra crazy shit out there. So when those type of things happen and it's just like, Phew, let it go because these are people in high power, that's it. I don't believe in none of y'all. I'm, I'm going for the underdog. And right now, I'm sorry to say Trump's an underdog. Well, he actually isn't. He actually isn't the underdog. They, they think he's going to. But is he even going to be able to get the Republican Party's vote, like to run on their ticket, or like, from whatever, is he going to run as from, an independent, or like how is that going to work? Like from what it seems, and I can only go based on social media and podcasts and certain things. Now I don't want to say media, but you know those people. It seems like he's so heavily favored that well, yeah, that no one has a chance against him. They said that like since he got arrested and he had that even more gangs so, came yeah. out, like they, they so like I don't know, he sold like. Hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of merchandise and shirts. Like, yeah, like, I I saw some. I, th I think it was a black dude. Some black dude got a tattoo of Trump on his fucking leg. No way. Yeah, straight up. <laughs> so it's like, um, you know, uh, I'm not saying he is the answer, but he's definitely the best option. And again, with the whole billionaire uh, talk and all yeah. that other stuff. I mean, you know? compared to the guy over <laughs> over there sleeping. Right. Who trips up the stairs? I don't know. Did you see Mitch up McConnell froze again? No. Oh, I heard about it yeah. though. They had to they had to remove him and he, and he was mumbling oh, shit. Like, <laughs> strap what that a, dude to a gurney and just wheel him away, please. What, like, what are we doing with all these old folks, man? I don't know. Somebody needs to come get their parents and like put them in their I sunny see, acres I, home or something. Well, I guess we'll see what time brings us. Huh? I'll tell you what though, man. Uh we need to we need to do this again and, and, and catch up again and see where the world's at and and see if the podcast found you that that guy, yep. <laughs> that guy, or or if it found you a fourth dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I need, just more dogs. Jill, I want I want people to follow you and and know what your your handle is on Instagram. If you don't mind telling them, it's I think it's just your full known blame, your name, right? That's it. It's real real simple, organic. J I L L R U D I S O N. You got it. Jill Rudison Rudison. Okay from wherever you said it was so that's where my great-grandfather was like no he was from russia or serbia 
Well, I, I really appreciate you coming, hon. I think it's been a blast. I think it was very fun talking to you. You, you, have, a, you have a great story. You know, you got a lot. You've done a lot. And that just sounds like I'm making you older than what you are, but you're not. Oh, stop. You still got a whole whole juicy half a life left. That's so, right. So still, wise. So Such don't, a juicy future ahead. Don't collect too many fucking dogs because then it's getting a little bit grimmer, okay? <laughs> it's just, the more, you, you already have a fucking bed full of dogs where a guy can't jump in. So, you know, that's not. That's because there's no guy right now. There's a guy. I'd be like, all right, dogs, bust it, get out, you know? Do they even have dog beds? Yeah, they do everywhere. Oh, okay. The dog okay. beds all over the house. All right, well, uh, sweetheart, it's been it's been great. We're gonna keep in contact. Um, appreciate you coming down here. I thought you lived a little bit out of the county, but you're in the hood. I'm can y'all can y'all believe this girl lives in Liberty City? Yep. Smack in the middle of Liberty City, and she's putting up containers. Hey man, my, <laughs> it's rough out there, man. That was that it, when I bought it, it was the only place I could afford. So. Here I am gentrifying the neighborhood. Uh, I think uh, it'll come back in your chin. You got it at a good price too, because right you now you know what it was. Off. It was the best investment I've ever made. That's awesome. So it worked in my favor. Congrats on that! Happy belated birthday! Thank you, thank you for coming here. I can't wait to have you back, guys. Don't forget to show you love. Go follow her, and don't forget to go to blacksheepapparel.shop if you want to get your gear out there. Love, peace, and a little bit of hair grease. Peace, guys.